It's dangerous to run around here, boys. Grandpa, hurry! Hurry Grandpa, up! Grandpa, you're too slow!
Hear another story. Ah, uh, yes, of course. You've been waiting a long time for this, so how about a special one? This story is very strange and very nasty, but somewhat nostalgic. Do you think you can be a good girl and listen all the way to the end? Is it a scary story? It might be. But it's also a very uh, important story. If you don't want to hear it, I can tell you a different story. No, I want to hear it. This way, I won't be scared. Will you turn on the TV then? Leave the sound down like always. Listen, this is important. At times, we must purge things from this world because they should not exist. Even if it means losing someone that you love. Could you wait just a little longer? This won't take long. Start soon. It's about time to get started. Zach. Zach, can you hear me? It's me. York. If you can hear my voice, could you respond? Ah, good. I thought you went to sleep. Zach, 
don't be surprised. The crime took place out in the country this time. Let's take it slow. Okay, Zach? Sure, that's one way of looking at it. But it's totally wrong. Listen, they both need each other. It's called interdependency, and they both know it. Yeah, I know. He does terrible things to Tom. Nasty, even sadistic things. But that's fine, as long as that's what Tom wants. Think of it. His actions. He's always asking for it. It's his partner's job to fulfill that need, and Jerry knows that. Proof? Well, in the Tom and Jerry show, they live with each other. Hello? Hello? Zach, I can't believe the Bureau still can't get me a satellite phone. These puppies are making me go to another town in the boondocks again. Well, I'll be a happy camper. Even if it ends up being a waste of time, at the very least it'll get me out of the cramped city for a while. Right, Zach? The perpetrator from the last case really was something. Who'd have thought there'd be razors laced into your nails? Crazy. Just crazy. Well, at least I now have a scar to show off. You see this? I got this when I arrested the Catwoman wannabe. Crazy. Don't you agree, Zach? Zack, there goes the civilized world. Looks like we're being welcomed. Zack, I'll let you handle the meet and greet.
through a lot of crazy situations, but that one, that one takes the cake. It's the first time I've been attacked so directly. Zack, can you give me a logical explanation about what that was? Never mind, don't answer. Life is fun because of the mysteries, right Zack?
There's definitely something in this town. Do you feel it, Zack? My coffee warned me about it. Yesterday morning, the milk I poured in my coffee made a sign. It said, Tomorrow you'll arrive in a place that will change your fate. Now you were very late. I didn't think you'd keep me waiting in the rain for so long. FBI Special Agent, Francis York Morgan. Please, just call me York. That's what everyone calls me. Agent York? Good, that's good. Are you the sheriff? Uh, no, I'm Deputy Sheriff Emily Wyatt. George, he's the sheriff. He went looking for you, actually. He should be back soon. I see. If you don't mind me asking, did you walk all the way here? My car broke down, that's all. She's easy on the eyes. Definitely worth a trip to the primitive world. By the way, don't mention anything about what happened back there. She'll think you're a psycho. Don't want that, do we, Zack? Welcome to Greenvale. I'm the sheriff, George Woodman. Call me George. FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please, just call me York. That's what everyone calls me. Could you tell me why the FBI is so interested in a small town homicide? Let's just say it's a personal interest in killers of young women. I'm always looking for new sample cases to help me with my profiling. Both our superiors have cleared this with each other. You can remain in command. You don't have a problem with this, do you? No. No problem. Just want to set things straight. Our small town has its share of problems. I'm the one fixing them one by one and maintaining peace and order. You can have your profiling sample, but I need you to understand that. <clears throat> of course. Of course. By the way, George, I had a little accident with my car. Could you send someone to take care of it? Oh, and my clothes and luggage are still inside. All right, don't worry. I'll get my assistant Thomas to take care of it. Do you need anything else? Thanks, that'll be all. Well then, I think I'll rest up first at the hotel. Then I'll join you on your investigation. Don't know how to say that. Uh, we really don't need your help. Unlike some of your corrupt city police officers, I play it by the book. I hope you'll come to appreciate that, Agent Morgan. And we'll handle the investigation. You just think of this as a vacation. Take it easy. Enjoy the nature here. 
you don't have to be a tree worshiper to appreciate the wildlife here. <laughs> Zach, let's reassess the situation. There are no cavemen here. We're as far forward as the Middle Ages. And we've just met the king. Using that one for a long time. Why don't you get it repaired? This TV is important to you, right? It's got some memories attached to it, sure. I used to watch movies on this thing with your grandma all the time. Grandma liked movies? Of course she did. Everyone loves movies, right? I love movies, too. I've never been to a movie theater, though. Don't breathe. Hold your breath. They can't see you if you hold your breath. Hurry. Like this. Cover your mouth. Who are you?
Zack, the symbolism in my dreams continues to intensify. A forest of red trees. A carpet with red leaves. A strange doll. And twin angels. But that child is what bothers me the most. I swear I've seen him before. I just can't remember where. Well, it'll probably come back to me eventually. For now, we need coffee. Let's head to the cafeteria, Zach. I hope they have some real coffee. I really need some coffee. Then we can head to the sheriff's office. There's a proper procedure for everything, right, Zach? Good morning, Mr. Morgan. Your breakfast is ready for you. Thank you, Mrs. Polly Oxford. Just Polly is fine. Well then, thank you, Polly. I'm starving. Is everything all right, Mr. Morgan? Yes, it's delicious, Polly. My compliments to the chef. I'm hoping my cooking will bring back repeat guests. Honestly, though, it's been a while since anyone has stayed here. I couldn't help but notice. Aside from you and me, there seems to be no other guests or workers around. What's that? The salt's in that white shaker there. Thank you. I was wondering if there were any other guests or workers here. Oh, no, no one else. My husband and I used to run this place, but he's in heaven now. You've been working here alone since then. Must be hard by yourself. Oh my, we're all out of pepper. I'm very sorry. It must be difficult to run a hotel by yourself. Well, yes, I suppose. I could just live on my pension, but I have to admit, running a hotel is kind of like a hobby of mine. That's nice. Polly, it might help to hear you better if you could sit a little closer. Oh my, Mr. Morgan, you're embarrassing me. So early in the day, too. I 
think I'm a little too old for you. And I still love my departed husband. May God rest his soul. I appreciate the invitation, but I'm fine over here. Polly, I can hardly hear you from all the way over there. You're exaggerating. This is fine. It won't do to be all clumped together with such a large table and cafeteria. We have to make use of all this space. <sighs> now tell me, that wound on your face, what happened? Let's just say I had some trouble during the last case I was working on. I'm sure it'll heal. It's just a flesh wound. Oh my, well, there's no need to be the tough guy here. I want you to be able to relax here. I've prepared a special room for you. A famous rock star once stayed in the same room, you know. Really? I feel honored. If you need anything, anything at all, just let me know. I'll help you out in any way I can. Zack, the lady is offering to help. Do you want to ask her about the town? Say, Polly, what can you tell me about this town? Well, let me see. You might know this already, but the town is called Greenvale. It rains here quite often, but it's a nice place, surrounded with nature. It was a big and prospering lumber town until not so long ago. We used to have a population of over 6,000 people. Less than a tenth of them left now. This hotel was built back then. We saw plenty of guests in those days. That's why this place is so big for such a small community. I have so many fond memories from back then. I suppose the clock on the community center is quite famous too. The clock? Oh yes, it's lovely. It rings in the morning and at night to let the whole town know the time. You'll hear it many times during your stay. It's a beautiful sound. And you'll love it too, I think. I look forward to hearing it then. Anything else you'd like to know about? Yes, actually, Polly. Could you tell me about the shops around here? Shops? Well, there aren't many. It is a small town, after all. You can do most of your shopping at the Milk Barn convenience store. The couple who run it are a unique pair. I'm sure you'll get to like them. The A&G Diner is a great place to eat. They might be open even if my kitchen is closed. If you want to go to a bar, there are two. The Galaxy of Terror and the Sweary 65. I don't care much for either of them. Bars are for the younger folk. We also have a gas stand, of course, the art gallery, and even a gunsmith. You should be able to find what you need. Thank you, Polly. Well, Mr. Morgan, I'd better start cleaning up. You just take it easy. I'll bring your coffee out in a moment. Thank you, Polly. I have to warn you, though. I am very particular about my coffee. The very best you have, please. I understand. I'll be right back with it. Did you see that, Zack? Clear as a crisp spring morning. F. K. In the coffee. I knew I could count on it. Never fails. Now then, let's get going.
A police car. So we have King George to thank for preparing a car for me. A pleasant surprise, eh, Zach? Let's take it for a spin. I have to tell you, Zach, this place simply amazes me. The keys were left on the front hood, and nobody stole the car. Values. This town has what the country needs. Values. Let's head over to the sheriff's department. So, Zach, about those bonus features in DVDs nowadays. You know, the ones from the 80s have almost no bonus material. Even if they do, it's a trailer and the visual quality is pretty bad. Well, that visual quality is a good reminder of those days. So many new audio and visual appliances were coming out back then. Do you remember the first video deck we bought? We bought it to record one of the Star Wars movies on TV. And remember when that video store opened, we spent hours there just trying to find a good movie to rent. There weren't that many to choose from back then. I remember renting some really bad ones after reading those back cover taglines. Hey, remember? Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, filmed in 1978. Produced, directed, written, and edited by John DeBello. It was really awful, but for some reason I still remember it pretty well. It had so many sequels and the original was re-released in 95. The 87 minute long theatrical release bumped up to a whopping 90 minutes. But that was around the time I joined the Bureau. I never have a chance to see it. I know, Zach. Once this case is over, we can watch it together. I bet we can buy a copy on the internet pretty easily. such a small town. The exterior woodwork is spectacular. Don't you agree, Zach? Pleasure to meet you, Agent Morgan. We've been expecting you. I'm Thomas McLean, the Sheriff's Assistant. FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please just call me York. It's what everyone else calls me. Very well then, Agent, Agent York. I believe I owe you a thank you for retrieving my belongings from my car. Thanks. Oh, no, no, just doing my job. I just... I want to help do everything I can to help the investigation. I just can't believe Anna was murdered. She was such a bright and lovely girl. Did you know her well? Well, no, not really. But it's a very small town. I'm sorry. It's just that this is the first really big case I've ever seen. 
I understand. Just try to relax. Can I have a look at Anna's file now? Y yes, of course. The sheriff told me to let you through to the meeting room, but I've lost the key to the cabinet where the files are. Why don't you take a look around while I go look for it? Okay, let me know when things are ready. Zach, Thomas appears to be the kind and sensitive type, totally at odds with the monarch. Almost a good setting for a cartoon. George, do you work out every day? Of course, Agent Morgan. Exercise keeps me healthy. I haven't missed a day since I started in high school. Now that's impressive. Remind me to get more exercise, Zach. But I can't do my full routine today without Arnold. I haven't seen Arnold around since yesterday. Arnold. He's a training buddy of mine. His partner Sylvester misses him, too. If you see Arnold around, let me know, will ya? Can't finish my workout menu without him. Okay. I'll keep an eye out for him. Zach, look at this. Oh, now this is something special. It's the epitome of the old Frontier Sheriff's Office. It's perfect. A stuffed deer's head on the wall. A flag, a hunting rifle. A hunting rifle, amazing. You'd never see a hunting rifle on the wall of a police department in the city. That's just amazing. Wonder if the sheriff would ever let me shoot it. Zack, we found Arnold. Let's get him back to George. I guess it's a cute name for a dumbbell. George, I found Arnold. Really? He was a bit hard-headed, but I got him to come back. Huh? Uh. 
Oh, <laughs> Arnold. Well done, Agent Morgan. Now I can work out using my normal workout menu. Good to hear that. Huh? Here's a little something to show you my appreciation. So that makes us even. I don't owe you anything, and you don't owe me anything. No changes to how we work together. Just bear that in mind. Zack? He needs some friends who aren't so dumb. A raincoat? Doesn't look like it's been used much, even though it rains here pretty often. What waste of nice fabric, eh, Zach? You found the key. Is this the one you were looking for? Uh, no. This is a gray squirrel. Sorry, that's not the key. Nothing particularly special about the gray squirrel, I'm afraid. You can find them in the US, Canada, and in England, too. A gray squirrel. What was I thinking? but we're looking for a southern flying squirrel right now. You found the key. I think so. Is this it? Ah. Uh. You don't know your squirrels, do you? This isn't the right key holder. This is a Siberian flying squirrel. It's closer to a land-based squirrel. The Siberian flying squirrel is larger than the southern flying squirrel and has a standing tail while the southern has a hanging tail. But we're looking for a southern flying squirrel right now. You sure do know a lot about squirrels.
You found the key. That's the right one? Yes, a southern flying squirrel. Thank you so much. I'll bring the files right in, so please go to the meeting room. Okay, I'll be waiting for you. Well, Zach, we just got here and we've cracked a big case already. The victim's name was Anna Graham. Age 18, she just recently graduated from high school this year. Her dream was to move out to the city and become a model. But for the time being, she was working in the A&G diner here in town. She lived with her mother, Sally. Anna's father died in an accident in the lumber mill when she was a child. Her mother is unemployed and lives on the insurance money from her husband's accident. After all, it's a small town with a low cost of living. Financially, they seem to get by fine, and they led normal lives. A normal life is exactly what a curious teenager doesn't want. It's all starting to make sense, Zach. City folk, huh? No. No, I take that back. All of them can't be as bad as him. And some should have better manners. Huh. This is a good biscuit. I've never tasted a biscuit this delicious. Where in town can I get these? Well, actually... I... Well... I... I baked them myself. Mm, that's amazing. What are you doing in law enforcement? I'm very particular about biscuits, I'll have you know. The balance of milk and butter you've achieved here. Oh, my. Agent Morgan, the autopsy's ready. You are welcome to accompany me to the Greenvale General Hospital. Emily, you come too. Thomas, stay here and tidy up these files. Y yes, sir. We're going to use the car outside. Let's get going. You might think this is just a small town police investigation, but our inspections are thorough and solid. I'm hoping you won't slow us down. The Greenvale General Hospital is down the road by the lake. It's too far to walk. Come on, get in the car. If I'm riding in a car, George, I prefer to be the driver. Can you provide a car for me? What are you talking about? You don't even know how to get there. Which is another good reason for me to drive, George. I need to learn my way around town. Oh, man. Very well. Then I'll ride with you. I want to keep an eye on you. Fair enough. Just one thing, Agent Morgan. Your involvement in this case is limited. That means you don't have to learn your way around town. George, we'd better get moving. The hospital closes at 2100. Agent Morgan, get us there quickly, but drive within the speed limit. Just because you have a badge doesn't mean you can drive like a maniac. George, what are you, his mother? We just need to get the autopsy results. Agent York isn't accustomed to the town yet. Give him a little slack. Hmm. Well then, Agent York, let's get going. Sure, sounds good.
Agent Morgan, I can't help noticing you prefer to work alone. Most of the time, yes. Don't you get lonely, flying all over the country alone? I must say, I've never felt lonely. Are you married? Unfortunately, relationships and I are fleeting strangers. I don't get on very well with women, you might be surprised to hear. That's because you're young. You notice things like that at my age. You have to treat women carefully, like a thin crystal wine glass. If you don't, they can cut scars on your face, just like yours, right? Uh, George, is this an interrogation? I see you're a seasoned professional. Uh, but let's not talk about my scar. It was caused by a problematic woman. Well, she got you good. Terribly good. It'll fade away, and nobody will notice it in a week. A week? It's not that light of a wound. So, Emily, tell me, is there really a need for a full-time sheriff in a small town like this? I'm sure it is small to your city eyes, but any gathering of people leads to all kinds of problems. Fights, runaways, stray pets. You're too fixated on violent crimes. Our job is to guide the people along the correct path, first and foremost. Now, that's what I consider to be my duty as the sheriff of Greenvale. Zach, there he is, the monarch in all his glory. Kind of makes me glad that I wasn't born here. Did you say something, Agent Morgan? No, nothing, George. I was just reflecting on a little history. Well, we're in the middle of a homicide investigation. Keep your mind on the matter at hand. Okay, which right now is driving. It's a pretty big hospital. I guess they wanted to be ready for uh, town-wide food poisoning? No, no. It's another leftover from the town's prosperous slumber days. Hard to imagine now, though, isn't it? My mother always talked about how energetic this town used to be. Almost like a gold rush, she used to say. Impressive. But the hotter the fever, the faster it cools. And so now there's hardly anyone left to use this place. It pains me watch my hometown lose so many citizens. Beyond your understanding, I'm sure. Yes, I'm sorry to say that it is. Indeed. And that's why this case is our problem. There really isn't any need for you to get too involved. Sheriff. Hi there, Fiona. We're here to see Usha. Do you know where he is? I think Dr. Johnson is in the computer room. A computer room? In a hospital? <laughs> nice to meet you, Mr. FBI agent. The computer room is where our employees share a computer. Very nice to meet you, too. I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. How did you know I was FBI? <laughs> Easy. None of the police in this town wear cologne. Besides, that scar in your face is the biggest rumor in town. Rumors get exaggerated as they spread, even in the countryside. What's that you're reading, if I may ask? You haven't heard of this yet? It's a recent bestseller mystery. It's set in the U.S., a small, traditional North American town close to the Canadian border. A peaceful, traditional place. However, that peaceful town is shattered by a terrible crime, the murder of a local girl. And that incident causes grief and sadness to everyone in town. But everyone feels the seditious, heinous evil still lurking, alive. Yes, much like the situation right now here in Greenvale. Fiona, don't say that. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't have said that. With Anna dead and all... Don't worry. Books are written to entertain, and it's good you're enjoying it. What we're faced with here is a terrible crime committed in a real world. Much different from that of a novel. So there's no need to apologize. Thank you, Agent York.
we couldn't find him. Fiona needs to check her information. No, I don't think so. Does the doctor like playing games by any chance? What do you mean? There's a message on the computer, and a card key already set in place. The king passes the rook and meets the bishop. The knight takes a pawn along for the queen. What does that all mean? It's a simple puzzle. Zach, let's take him up on his challenge. You can do this, right? The doctor awaits below with the deceased. Another code? But there's nowhere to insert a password. More games. I'm going to get Fiona to call Usha up here right now. No need, George. The message appeared with the card key. It's telling us where to use it. This is not the time to be joking around, Agent Morgan. Dr. Usha is below with the deceased. With Anna. Below being underground, I take it. Simple. Simple. Then it's time to meet the mischievous architect of this little game. Nah. Asha, sorry to keep you waiting. Ah, you made it. Let's get started, shall we? This is Agent Morgan from the FBI. Hmm, nice to meet you. I'm Usha Johnson, the doctor in this hospital. FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please call me York. Everyone calls me that. Very well, Agent York. Are you a forensic practitioner? Let's just say I've dealt with corpses before. That battle of wits, by the way. Did you create that yourself? Mm-hmm. I just wanted to see if our FBI agent could handle the task. <laughs> I see. Well, it was pretty fun. Oh, I'm glad you liked it. We don't have much time. We need those autopsy results. Next time, try challenging us without obstructing an investigation. You've angered the monarch.
From the onset of rigor mortis, the stiffening of the muscles, the time of death is estimated to be between 20 and 2200 hours. Uh, that's still quite early for such a crime to take place. Note that there are two exterior wounds, pressure marks around the neck, and a long cut running from chest to abdomen. Blood marks on her right hand tell us she was gripping something round in her right hand. Her skull is also fractured, but that is unrelated to the cause of death. It probably happened to her after she was killed. Now, I first thought death by suffocation due to the marks on her neck. But after further investigation, I now have a different conclusion. The direct cause of death was loss of blood from the wound. Which means? She was cut up while she was still alive. Yes, uh, a sharp knife was used. It was inserted beneath the sternum and then quickly sliced downwards. The excessive loss of blood from her internal organs is what actually killed her. Her nails are clean, and with no skin cells from the attacker. She also doesn't appear to have been bound nor badly beaten. She was apparently killed without resistance. The most tragic thing, however, was that she was unable to speak her story to anyone who could hear her cries. The perpetrator cut out Anna's tongue. Well, I believe she was drugged first to phase her consciousness and then the killer killed her. Now, the killer most likely has a deep, traumatized past concerning women. He probably cannot converse with them normally. Cutting out the tongue suggests a very lonely individual, either that or a truly hardcore sadist. He must get off on watching women suffer, especially when they can't answer back. He watched as the blood pumped from her body, as she gradually grew cold. Now, a case in Seattle in 1985 was much like... Usher, please, limit your report to your findings as a doctor. Criminal profiling is my job. You're wrong, also. Anna died fully, deeply, painfully aware of what was happening to her. But, uh... Tell me, what time did it stop raining on the night Anna was killed? Uh, just before I went to bed, right after the movie on TV ended, so around 1 a.m. What movie was it? An American Werewolf in London. Uh, directed by John Landis, 1981. So the rain stopped, accompanied by the ending song, Blue Moon. George, would you mind if I examined Anna myself? What more do you hope to find? I'm sure I mentioned that I have a personal interest in cases like these. From her lack of resistance, I'd say that Anna's injuries happened very 
quickly. Unable to speak, she was then left to cry herself to death. Zack, it's all starting to come together. The perpetrator stayed with her for at least two hours until it stopped raining. At the estimated time of her death, it was still raining, but you can still see tear marks on her cheeks. That means she was killed under a roof somewhere. Hmm. She was then carried into the woods after it stopped raining. Hmm. <clears throat> there, there's one other thing. Her tongue was removed with a very blunt knife. In fact, it's more likely it was simply chopped off. Asha, are you a passionate man? Well, not particularly, I mean, but I am man enough should the moment call for it. George, how about you? I'm very passionate, yes. Especially when it comes to women. But I don't see what that has to do with anything. George, the perpetrator is just like you. He's passionate about women. He's a passionate kisser. This was a kiss of death. Ah, the perpetrator bit off Anna's tongue. <laughs> we'll never get a dental print from a wound like this. But this is still a big lead. sightseeing tour just came to an end. This case is now under the jurisdiction of the FBI. I'm assuming command. I'll need you to assist me in the investigation. What in the hell do you mean, Agent Morgan? I know I said I was passionate, but you can't think I did this. That's not why I'm assuming command, George. You're a suspect just as much as every other passionate man on Earth. Let me show you something. I'm sure you have a lot of questions, but most of the details are top secret. Oh. George, Emily, we should be going. No need to stay here any longer. Okay. I have to sign the release. Just give me a moment. Very well. I'll go on ahead. I can't take it any longer down here. Bishop takes Queen. His rook takes your queen, then your knight takes rook, and checkmate. Huh? Oh. <sighs> My first victory in the Grandmaster ranking. Zack, they're here.
Agent Morgan, if you're so desperate, then why not smoke two at once? 
it <sighs> Who's that old man? That's Harry. Harry Stewart. One of the bigger problems around here. His father started up the lumber trade and founded this town. But he's a weird one, as I'm sure you can see. Always dressed like that, never speaking to the townsfolk. And just FYI, he owns almost the entire town. Not that that makes any difference. So long as I'm around, he won't be getting away with any funny business. Mr. Francis York Morgan, haste won't lead you to what you seek. Keep your eyes focused on your footing as we speak. So says Mr. Stewart. Nice to meet you too. How did you know my name? Mr. Francis York Morgan, information desires you, just as you desire information too. So says Mr. Stewart. Harry, stop trying to get in our way. Keep this up and even you'll have to answer to the law. Mr. Francis York Morgan, with each rain, our town goes mad. To our disdain, unpreventable. So sad. So says Mr. Stewart. Thanks for the warning. Then we shall depart, Mr. Francis York Morgan. That's how he always is. Always spouting that nonsense. Don't give it any thought. It's all gibberish. Emily here. Uh-huh. Oh. Okay, thank you, Thomas. Agent York, we've contacted the first witnesses to the crime scene. You can interview them where they found the dead body. Excellent. I was just about to ask if you could take me there. The body was found in the Greenvale Forest Park. That's west from here, and too far to walk. A forest park? It's the pride of the town. It has a beautiful trail leading to a viewing site over Velvet Falls. Oh, that does sound fantastic. Show me the sights. Uh, that may have to wait. We promised to be there by 1800 to interview the first witnesses to the crime scene. Agent Morgan, if I could just give you a friendly warning. Are you really upset about me taking over the case? <clears throat> I have the authority approved by the FBI to assume command. I understand you don't like it, but you will follow my orders. I'm not disputing FBI authority, but this is our town. You won't get far alone, and you gain nothing by antagonizing me. It's part of my personality. I just do things my way. I can take you off the case if you wish. Stop it, you two. We need to solve this case, not bicker among ourselves. Mm.
Anna's body was discovered by the woodsman Jim Green, along with his two grandchildren, Isaac and Isaiah. What were they doing in the forest? Just their daily routine. They found Anna's body during a morning walk. So you've talked to them already? Not officially. Not yet. Not yet? Are you out of your mind? You haven't interviewed them yet? Agent York, that tone is hardly appropriate. We were given orders to wait for you to arrive. Orders by who? A man called Abrams from the FBI. Robert, is it? Good old Bob Abrams. I did tell him to stay out of it. It's always tough to have a meddling boss, huh, Zach? I thought you knew, Agent Morgan. Don't worry about it. We may not have taken official statements, but we got all the information we need. I can fill you in right now if you'd like. Thanks, George, but that won't be necessary. I want to hear the details from the witnesses themselves, firsthand. I just can't believe that the children had to witness the crime scene. They may be traumatized. You'd better do this carefully. Don't tell me you get nervous talking to children, Emily. Not at all. That's that's not what I meant. Then what did you mean? Ugh, just forget it. Agent Morgan, how much longer do you want to keep talking? Maybe we should cut the chit-chat and go get our official statements. George is right. Let's head over to the forest park. Agent Morgan, how much longer do you want to keep talking? Maybe we should cut the chit chat and go get our official statements. George is right. Let's head over to the forest park.
Is this government land? No, it's private. Owned by Harry. This whole area? That's right. I'm sure I mentioned that he owns pretty much the whole town. He used the money left by his father to buy up most of the town. Many town residents live on his land. Zack, did you hear that? This entire park. A rich man's personal playground. These country rich folk are amazing. It all looks very well kept, too. I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please call me York. It's what everyone calls me. And you are Jim Green? That I am, son. I keep these woods. Well, you're doing a fine job. Well, I used to be a tree surgeon. And these two discovered the body? Yes, my grandchildren, Isaac and Isaiah. Zack, you see that? Twins. Just like in my dream. We gotta keep an eye on these two. I'm sorry. Could we talk away from the boys? I want to help your investigation, but I don't want them to hear this. Very well. Emily, please. I'll just take them over there, then. Thank you. Hold on. Don't do anything without asking me. These children were the first to witness the crime scene. I want to talk to them. Come on, they're just kids. They have no idea what really happened to Anna. That doesn't matter. You agree with me, right, Zack? How heartless. Do you ever think of other people's feelings, ever? Emily's right. That's stone cold, even for the sake of investigation. Children see things in pure, simple terms. They may have seen something we adults would never spot, and they are here at our request as well. We could at least chat with them and see if they want to make a statement. Are you serious? I never joke about matters like this. Oh my god. Don't worry. They aren't as fragile as you think. Look at them, standing so upright there. Now then, Isaac, Isaiah, tell me. What did you find here? Anna, she was so pretty. She had a red dress on. Her hair was shining. Bright gold hair. There were lots of animals around her. Squirrel, weasel, and a snake. A real snake. We didn't know until then. But we know now. Anna was the fairy of the forest. She was a goddess. She smiled when she saw us. She looked so happy. That's right, Isaac. Isaiah. She was a fairy, a goddess. I'm sure she is playing with those animals even now. Of course she is. Yeah, of course. Most useful information, boys. Well, Emily, you can take them now. Okay, Zach. This is where Anna's body was. And that means our unsub. Our unknown subject was here, too. So, what happened here? Zack, something is still missing. We need more clues.
I haven't seen one of these in a long time. It's upside down. I guess this is meant to be an anti-peace sentiment then. These holes on the ground were made by uh, high stiletto heels all around here. And this depression here, Agent Morgan, I see what happened here. We hung her from the tree and put on her shoes. He was really enjoying it. The sicko. And he knelt down. And, and disgusting. George, you certainly have a vivid imagination. An interesting theory. Don't you think, Zach? What was his name again? That Hollywood producer. That's right. Joel. We really ought to introduce George to him, Zach. Profiling is a little different from writing a screenplay, though. An idea being interesting doesn't make it fact. Let me enlighten you, George. The footprints reveal that one of the heels were missing from the shoes. And they're different from Anna's shoes that we saw at the office. Furthermore, there would be even more disgusting evidence if he did kneel and, well, do as you suggested. If you want proof, go ahead and try it for yourself. He knelt here for a reason other than simple perversion. Zack. What was he doing in front of Anna? Just like the twins said, she was a goddess. The unsung, our unknown subject, offered prayers to Anna's body, with its bitten out tongue and massive body wound. Once dead Anna was transformed from an object of despite into one of worship. So who is Miss Stiletto Heels? The steps are close coming up to the body and then farther apart going away. There was a reason to hurry away then. That settles it then, George. Miss Stiletto Heels is a third party here. She's not the murderer. No one runs away from an object of worship. She could be another victim who was with Anna. Or perhaps an accomplice who fled for some reason. She is also one who took whatever it was Anna was holding on to in her hand. But why? Why did she leave her here? Only Miss Stiletto Heels knows the reason for that. She might know something about the man with the reversed peace mark, too. How many women wear high stiletto heels in this town, do you think? Oh, I should think most of them have at least one pair. I do too, before you ask. But nobody would come all the way out here wearing them, except, well, except maybe one person. Don't keep me in the dark then. Who might this elegant lady be? Diane the owner of the art gallery. But she's out of town for a big art auction. I heard she'll be coming back in a couple days. Then we'll just have to give her a warm welcome home. A more immediate matter then. Where in town can you find something like this? It should be a building that isn't used anymore, with either a lot of metal or metal machinery or something like that. The, the old, old lumber, lumber mill. mill. 
that it's time to really get this show on the road. Could you guide me to this perfect setting for extravagant murder? far from here. If that's where she was killed, why would the killer go to all the trouble of carrying her all the way here? I don't know yet. My profiling instincts tell me one thing is for sure, though. The unsub's personality is totally different before and after the crime. The unsub killed her in a brutal, horrifying way, and then displays powerful adoration after she's dead. Something close to love. That could well be the key to all this. I will say this though, George. Profiling is a risky business. Of course, if the unsub planted those stiletto footprints himself, well then, everything I've just said falls apart. But there's no evidence that he left those stiletto footprints. I'm sure we have Miss Stiletto Heels to thank for those tracks. All I can do is deduce the unsub's feelings in light of the evidence, and carefully figure the unsub's M.O. Modus operandi, his way of thinking. It usually unveils something that a normal forensic analysis may overlook. That's my way of profiling. It's not for everyone, but it works for me. When I first joined the force, this lumber mill was still in full swing. It closed up right when I first moved here. And now it's totally abandoned. I presume so. I've never really been inside, so I don't know for sure, but it sure is run down. Deserted buildings are perfect for criminal hideouts and activities. I keep telling Harry to have the place torn down. Probably a little late for that. After all, it's already been used as the site of Anna's murder. We don't know that for sure yet, Agent Morgan. But that's right, from your point of view. But the perpetrator selected the lumber. Agent York, you seem very confident about this. Confident? No. Confidence is a sweet spot between being rude and hopeless. I'm just drawing natural conclusions from the facts that we have seen. That sounds exactly like being full of confidence, at least to me, and to normal people with common sense. Common sense can be the opposite of fact sometimes. Bear that in mind. Oh, I will, Agent York. Thank you for another pearl of wisdom. Either way, we'll know for sure by simply going to the lumber mill. So keep your pearls of wisdom to yourself, and let's hurry. Well said, George. Can you step on it, Agent York?
Let's go, and find out if your facts can be trusted. You're full of confidence, right? Let's get to the lumber mill. I'm going in alone. You two stay here. I can't concentrate on profiling with other people around me. Now hold on a minute. We're investigating this case together. Listen, I can't risk the crime scene being compromised by you two. What are you saying? You're not the only professional law enforcement officer here, Agent Morgan. We know how to secure a crime scene. I'm sorry. That was rude of me. But this is how I operate. Furthermore... Yes? Furthermore what? To me, the outsider FBI agent, Every citizen of this town is a suspect. You two could be in on this whole thing for all I know. I have to keep suspects out of the crime scene. How can you say such a thing? Is he making fun of us? We should have left him behind and come here by ourselves. You're right. I've never been so insulted. I'm sorry, but I'm just doing my job. Zack, if they're pros, then we should let every first-person shooter gamer out there join the SWAT team. Zack, they're here. Just as I thought, Zack. This is where Anna was killed.
Too much noise. We're still missing a vital piece of the puzzle. Zack, it's almost like an altar. Was the murder some kind of ritual? Thank you. 
Huh? 
you. Zack, this is a waste of time. Let's go.
That's all the information we need, Zack. Let's go back and show them what we found. Ooh. 
Have you seen any of these things before? No, not that I know of. But that raincoat is a little odd. Odd? In a town where it rains so much? Well, the people here rarely go out in the rain. I moved here during high school, and I never really understood why. Can you shed some light on this, George? Oh, well, there's an old story. Folklore. It's a fairy tale, to me. Something about a killer in a raincoat who appears on rainy nights. A vicious killer in a bright red raincoat. Yeah, that was it. Just a foolish piece of superstition. A rubbish story someone made up. Not many people still believe it, but I guess it's a traditional place. Most of the shops still close up when it rains. School's out, too. And since there's no reason to go out, not many people ever wear raincoats. And now the raincoat killer has leapt out from his picture book. Oh, by the way, would you two kindly show me your backs? Our backs? Is this related to the case? The person with the upside-down peace mark in that photo we found. He's our killer. And what makes you so sure about that? Zack and I saw him kill Anna in the lumber mill. He killed her. Right in there. Oh, one thing. Please don't ask me about Zack. That's a private matter. Anyway, by showing me your backs, we can clear up most of my concerns about you. Isn't that for the best? You do want to remove yourselves from the suspect list. It will make things a lot easier. This is insane. Your methods are rude, insulting, and out of the question. And Emily is a female officer. Forcing her to show you her back is harassment. I don't care if you are FBI or not. You are out of line. Mm-hmm. Hmm. hmm. George, it's okay. Let's just show him and get it over with. Emily, are you crazy? Look, we flash our backs and he'll start trusting us a little more. Right? Agent York? Are you satisfied now? Yes. My apologies. <sighs> now you, George. Yeah, yeah, okay. I can't refuse it now, can I? But don't expect to get your way all the time, Agent Morgan. Hmm. George! What are these scars? Just like your Mr. Zack. Something private. I don't have to tell you about it. Of course. Just like Zack. We can understand that, right, Zack? Anyway, this will make things a lot easier from now on. I'm glad to say you're both pretty much off the hook. Thank you for your cooperation. If anyone is suspicious around here, it's him. He's the most suspicious. No, I don't think so. But he certainly is the most irritating. We've studied the crime scene. You know what we have to do next, Zach. George! Can we arrange to have the town folk gather in one place? There are some things I want to address with the town folk. Very well. I'll arrange to have as many as possible gather in the community center tomorrow. Thank you, George.
Welcome back, everyone. Ah, uh, Thomas. Agent Morgan, it's past 2100. Let's meet up again at the community center tomorrow. I haven't been sleeping much since this all started, to be honest. I'm exhausted. I was just about to suggest the same thing. I'll make arrangements for people to gather between 1500 and 1700. I'll try and get as many people as I can to come, so don't be late, okay? Don't be late. I'll be there. The community center's on the south side. I've marked it on your map. Thanks, Thomas. Well then, see you tomorrow.
Stack, is there something here that you want to check out? We need to be at the community center by 1500 today. Just think. It's going to get fun. Speaking of 80s movies, one jewel in the rough springs to mind. Deadly Spawn. Do you remember that one, Zach? Back in 83, directed by Douglas McCown. Right, it was filmed pretty cheap, but still it was pretty good. The monster design with the mouth crammed full of teeth, I loved it. So many delicious B-movie cliches. Did you know that they made a sequel? But I never got to see the sequel. The rental store didn't have it for some reason. They said the staff for the sequel was totally different from the original. Wonder how the sequel turned out. You know, the monster in that one responded to sound. Wait, Zach. Sounds a lot like the movie Tremors. I think that one was back in 89, directed by Ron Underwood. Now that was a great role for Kevin Bacon. Masterpiece. Zach, that one had sequels like crazy. I remember there was a fourth one. I've only seen the first one, though. Tremors. I think Fred Ward was in it. You say Fred Ward and I say, Remo Williams, The Adventure Begins. That one was back in 85, I think. Directed by Guy Hamilton. Guess Hamilton was aiming to start a series like 007, but it had no sequels. A real shame. Do you remember the martial arts they used in that film? Called Sananju? The ultimate in martial arts, using no weapons at all. Remo's Master Chun ran across water, remember? And he loved soap operas. Man, that was a good character. He was played by Joel Grey, the best supporting actor in Cabaret. Of course, in Remo, he had so much makeup on you couldn't tell.
Now, Joel Gray's daughter is, of course, that's right, Jennifer Gray. You knew that, right, Zach? Jennifer Gray. She's in one of my most favorite movies, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, 1986, directed by John Hughes. <laughs> that one was so 80s. Zach, you're not the most cheerful guy I know, but you really do like those cheerful movies. We used to love those teenage movies back then, didn't we? Breakfast Club and Pretty in Pink, St. Elmo's Fire and Fast Times at Ridgemont High. That last one was in 1982, directed by Amy Heckerling. Now that was an impressive film. You've got Sean Penn in the lead, with Jennifer Jason Lee and Phoebe Cates, not to mention Nicolas Cage and Forrest Whitaker were in it too. And the original book and the script were written by Cameron Crowe. How could that not be a great film? Do you remember, Zach? When that movie ended, the last words, the end, was from an arcade game. That's right, it was from Missile Command. That stuck in my head for a while. The memories. I feel like I have a lot of movies to catch up on. Let's just hope we can get to the end of this case soon. Then maybe we can catch up on a few. Give some thought about what movie you want to see next, Zach. Zach, is there something here that you want to check out? We need to be at the community center by 1500 today. Just... It's going to get fun. Okay, Zach, I've been thinking about what movie I'd like to watch next, and finally I've made a decision. It's always hard to narrow it down just to one movie, but I've put a lot of thought into this, and I'm sure you'll agree with me. 1975, directed by Steven Spielberg himself, the grandfather of panic movies, set in a small town in Massachusetts. That movie made me stay away from the beach for years. 
I was always afraid that a hand might come floating up. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah? It's Jaws. The underwater camera work accompanied by that John Williams music. I'd never been that scared by a movie before. But the best thing about it is that it isn't just another panic movie. The mayor who won't close the beach even when there are so many victims. And Chief Brody putting the citizens' lives above all else. The film gave a lot of time to the dispute and friction between them. It certainly had a lot of messages for a two-hour film. That's probably another reason why it was such a record-breaking hit. One of my regrets in life is that I didn't see it at the movie theater. I guess I was still just a child back then. But still, I wanted to taste that terror in real time. That reminds me, Zach. Did you know this one? Jaws also appears in another movie that was produced by Spielberg. The second Back to the Future. It was directed by Robert Zemeckis, who later made Forrest Gump. That's also a masterpiece, of course, but we'll discuss that another time. So, the scene where Jaws appears is right after Marty McFly goes 30 years into the future. He passes by a movie theater and is attacked by a holographic shark. Marty is shocked, of course, but looking closer, he sees the words, Jaws Part 19. The director is credited as Steven Spielberg Jr. In reality, there were actually only four Jaws movies, but it was still a great joke. 30 years from 1985 would be 2015. We'll be there pretty soon. I wonder what life would be like by then, Zach. I'm working here. You can't just stroll into a chef's kitchen. Then perhaps you would give me your permission to enter. No! Get the hell out of here! Zack, everyone has their own sanctuary. Let's leave him in his. Hello? So, what exactly do you want to talk to everyone about? This case goes deeper than you think. The town folk may have heard about the murder, but they don't understand it. It's a very dangerous situation, and I need to warn them properly. I hope most of them are decent enough to come. No problem there. Emily has made all the arrangements. I've told everyone to gather around between 1500 and 1700. Great. 
Reminds me of a film I saw recently. A town is under attack by aliens, and so the mayor calls all citizens to the town hall to warn them. However, seeing this, the aliens attack the hall and wipe them all out together. Is that relevant, Agent York? The way they kill is fantastic. They used a combination of balloons and meat sauce for exploding heads. Those aliens start firing their death rays and heads start popping. Splat! Really quite something. Agent York, some of us are trying to eat here. I know, Emily. I'm one of them. Well, anyway, your cooking is the best, Thomas. Thank you. Nope, no problem. Zach, we can take a rest if you're tired.
Greenvale Community Center. Now that's an impressive building. The clock tower is impressive too. Zach, I haven't been on stage like this since elementary school. I'm not some tree in the wind this time, either. Well, that was a tough roll. I was a piece of scenery. Bright red tree. <clears throat> Thank you all for coming today. Getting right down to business. Agent Morgan from the Federal Bureau of Investigations wishes to speak with you. Good afternoon. I'm Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Some of you are already aware by now of the tragic murder of Anna Graham. Truly a heinous, terrible crime. I've come to this town to solve the murder of this young, beautiful girl. And to bring the one responsible to justice. Unfortunately, incidents like these have a tendency to happen again. I ask to have you gathered here so I can share some advice in order to minimize the risk of further fatal incidents. Firstly, please stay away from any dark, dangerous, isolated places. Those of you with children, especially of Anna's age. Please, guide your children away from such places at all costs. Secondly, avoid going out when it is raining. Now I've heard the folklore story of the raincoat killer. There is a chance that the murderer is mimicking the story. Women should also be especially careful I would hate to see more victims. Who's the fashionably late one? That's Carol. Thomas's sister. She owns a bar. Thomas's sister. Now, hey, excuse me. So, as I have said, avoid going outside when it is raining. Young women should be especially careful. Report anything or anyone suspicious immediately. The murderer will be caught and brought to justice. But you must all remain on guard until we do so. That's all I have to say. Thank you. When paying for our sins, we must not frown. The loss of Anna was for that debt. When purple fog covers our town, we'll all wander in hell, I fret. So says Mr. Stewart. Sure knows how to steal thunder. Well then, Zack, 
Let's ask some questions before all these guys leave. Agent York, your words really made me think about Anna's death again. How could one do such a terrible thing? I'm still in shock. <sighs> Thomas, I forgot to ask. You don't have a tattoo on your back, do you? A uh, tattoo? Uh, I do, actually. But why? Could you show it to me, please? What? Now? Here? Yes, please. This is vital for our investigation. Okay, if it's gonna help you any. <sighs> well, I'm wondering who G is now, but aside from that... Did it tell you anything? It told me that you didn't kill Anna. Of course not. What are you saying? You ought to see that tattoo, Zack. A big heart with an arrow through it and love G in the center. I don't know when he got that done, but we've all been through the 80s. Quite a performance. Mysterious and very poetic. But I don't think many of your audience appreciated it. Mr. Francis York Morgan. The purple fog appears with rain, soiling and ruining our town. The evil does not drain. Find out why the town is soiled. Remove the source from which it boiled. Then and only then, your case is solved. But for this to happen, to solve the crime, the proper must do the proper at the proper time. It is not yet mine, that is, Mr. Stewart's time, not mine. But if you, Mr. York, find the right timing to chat with me, that is, with Mr. Stewart, may that be. Informative and fruitful, you will see. So says Mr. Stewart. So, Harry. You know something, but there's some reason why you can't tell me yet. Is that what you're trying to say? Cut the poetic rubbish, Harry, and tell us what you know. We can force you to talk, you know. Mr. Francis York Moore, pay close attention to the signs, the omens, and the premonitions. Small they may be, they still are finds, and helpful to your investigations. So says Mr. Stewart. Thanks for the warning, Harry. But don't worry. Me and Zack, we know what we're doing. Agent York, are you finished asking questions yet? When you're done, let me know. We'll all get dinner. I'm FBI Special Agent, Francis York Morgan. So Anna was killed. But why does that bring the FBI here? I have an interest in murder cases involving young women. Well, you know, man, this might just be another case to you. But it means the death of a friend to me. And I don't want you taking this lightly like it's just another case. 
I never take anything of this nature lightly, I assure you. I'm here to apprehend the perpetrator who did this. Yeah, because local enforcement can't shine their own boots, right? Good point. You can't always count on the police now, can you? But that doesn't mean you're going to capture the perpetrator yourself, Quint. How do you know my name? I memorized the name of every citizen before arriving in town. I also know about you and your significant other. You mean Becky? Don't underestimate the FBI. We know and see everything. I'm sorry if I was a little harsh. I want to help, I do. Okay? Okay, Zach, I'll tell you how I knew his name. He's got a small Q on his hat. That was the only name beginning with Q that I could think of. He was even kind enough to tell us his girlfriend's name. I can read him like a book, Zach. You're York, right? I'm Richard Dunn, the owner of the Darts Bar, Swery 65. How'd you like the town? Oh, it's great. Aside from the murder that happened here. Yep. I mean, murder just doesn't fit with a small town like ours. Well, Richard, I'll have to correct you on that. Crimes don't care about size. Big town, small town, just isn't a factor. Uh, I guess you're right. So, how did you know Anna? I've known her since she was a child. She was the same age as my son. You know, she always stood out, being pretty and all, just like her mother, Sally. What do you know about Sally? Well, I, I went all through school with her right here in town. I never thought our children would be the same age. I don't see her here today. Ah, oh, well, see, she lost her husband, and this time it's her daughter. She's at home right now, trying to make peace with it all. You seem to know a lot. How long have you been in love with her? <laughs> hey, hey, don't go there. That scar of yours tells me you got your hands full too, right? Let's not dive into personal matters. It'll be better for you and me. You're right, Richard. Collecting gossip won't help with the matter at hand. Good evening, Agent. Good evening, Mr... Brian, the gravekeeper. <clears throat> Brian. Mr. Brian, I like the retro look. Auditioning for Little Grave on the Prairie? Anna. Oh, she was so beautiful. Too soon. <clears throat> too, too soon to go to the grave. So sad. So sad. I totally agree. That's why I'm here, looking for the one who did it. Were you close to her? Mm. Anna, <laughs> her smile, so warm. Anna, blonde hair, so bright. There's a graveyard somewhere in town, Zach. I'm not excited about the idea, but maybe we should at least check it out. Anna was an airhead. What do you mean? Are you saying she was killed because she was an airhead? Or are you saying that she was an airhead for being killed? I'm sure she's still an airhead even in heaven. She changed her hair every day. If she lost a pound, she'd be ecstatic. Gain one and she'd almost be in tears. She broke many, many plates every day at the diner and she'd always have a smile on her face. Always having fun. Everyone looked at her and knew she was a cute, adorable, loving airhead. But they would be smiling right along with her. I wouldn't be surprised if the angels smiled with her too.
Isaac and Isaiah said that Anna was a fairy of the forest, a goddess. Agent York, you make any progress? Of course, plenty. But tell me, Usher, when is Anna's funeral? Mm, that's still undecided. Sally isn't really in any condition to do it right now. Her mother? I don't see her here. Anna was her sole reason for living, after her husband was deceased. Well, she's probably huddled up at home. And I should probably take some time to pay her a visit. Well, yes, you should. And I'd appreciate it if you could, too. Um, but don't go too hard on her, okay? Are you getting closer to catching the murderer? Hello again, Fiona. Good to see you here. Well, Dr. Johnson told me to be here. He said it would be important. Well, that was good advice. He may be young, but he seems like a wise man. Oh, and he's a very hard-working person, too. Everyone thinks he's some kind of weirdo, but I don't think so at all. People don't understand why he's in the autopsy room all day, but I do. He's doing research to make the world a better place in the future. You know, he already made a fortune in L.A. with his career. I did not know that. You didn't? Oh, the doctor is a very rich man. He has a really big house over by the lake. Amazing, Zach. He must be loaded. Rich and young. A perfect combination. But you don't get that feeling from him at all, do you? He doesn't show it. That's one of the things I like best about him. Well, I could have been fooled if it weren't for you. Thanks for the valuable information, Fiona. So you're the FBI agent, are you? I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. I'm the general. I fought for my country in the Vietnam War. A real-life war hero. So why are you living here? Soldier, this is my hometown. After a man returns from war, there's no place to go other than his hometown. In your little speech, you mentioned the raincoat killer. Was that a problem? You imbecile. The raincoat killer's no myth, not mere folklore, not a fairy tale. It's based on actual events that happened in this town. It is. I'm interested. Can you tell me more about this? <laughs> You kids today don't even know how to ask for something, right? Soldier, if you want to hear more, you come to my office. He literally exudes raw power, Zack. Despite the credibility issues, we should give him a visit. One thing, though. He calls himself a general, but isn't that a sergeant's uniform? I'm U.S. Special Agent Francis York Morgan. And you are? 
Olivia, Nick's wife. Anna worked at your husband's diner, right? What kind of girl was she? Well, she was a very hard worker. A nice girl. Did you ever see her acting strange? Well, not really. But there was one thing. Well, you see, the diner closes when it rains. Many shops do that around here, as you might have heard. Anyway, Anna always seemed unfocused the day after it rained. And came in late, too. It was almost as if she used up all her energy the day before. Come to think of it, that was really strange. Did that legendary monster really kill her? It wasn't a monster. Just a criminal. A criminal I'm going to catch and bring to justice. I'm U.S. Special Agent Francis York Morgan. I presume you are the owner of the diner that Anna worked at? That's right. I'd like to ask you a few questions about Anna Graham. Did you notice anything strange about her prior to the incident? <laughs> Nick, are you hiding something? No, nothing. You sure? I'm sorry, but I don't like repeating myself. I'm FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please, call me York. Wesley, owner of the gun store called Panda Bear. People around here call me the gunsmith. Was there something you want to ask me? How do you make a living running a gun store in a place like this? I'd be worried because there can't be that many customers. Worry gives a small thing a big shadow. I do gunsmith work in my shop, too. If you got the skills, the customers find you. All you need is a network. I hope so. You've got quite a selection here. No wonder people come from all around. Even today, a customer paid me to go to Seattle for some help. I just got back. I see. Well, I'll be sure to visit your store sometime. I'd like for you to take a look at my gun. Understood. Look forward to it. The shop will be open again tomorrow. It's usually open from 2000 to 0600. See you then. You're Isaac and Isaiah's mother? Yes, I'm Lily. I'm FBI Special Agent... Agent York, right? You are good. <laughs> the handsome special agent from the big city. The facial scar trademark. The way you introduce yourself. Everyone's talking about you. Well, I can't say much about the scar. But the way I introduce myself... Zack and I consider it a kind of ritual of sorts. Everyone has their own rituals. It's like always leaving the house left foot first. It's one of those things. You certainly are a funny one. So have you noticed anything strange or out of place recently? Well, Becky's been taking a couple of days off from work, but aside from that, I heard she was in shock after the murder. But... You think there's something else? Well... I took the boys along to see her today. She's always so kind to them, and they love seeing her too. But she took in the boys and told me to wait outside. Something about a special secret between just the three of them. I just couldn't understand it. Now that's interesting. Thank you, Lily. Perhaps we should give Becky a visit tomorrow, Zach. Da 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 da
Dun, 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 dun. Yeah! Hey there, FBI. I'm Keith Ingram. FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. Please, call me York. That's what everyone always calls me. Okay, York. No problem, man. So, Keith. I hear you run the Milk Barn convenience store. That's right, man. Rock and roll! Do you sell raincoats there by any chance? Yeah, but nobody ever buys them, though. Anyone who wears one of them, I say, just ain't a rocker. But you know, that scar of yours. Now that scar rocks. This scar rocks? <laughs> now that's a new one. I'll drop by your store soon, and let's talk then. Yeah, cool, man. Rock on, FBI! Mr. Morgan, you're quite an impressive public speaker. Really? Thank you, Polly. You reminded me a little of a play I saw when I was younger. What kind of play? I'm talking about back when this place was still called the Mercury Theater. When I was young, I used to come here often with my husband. God rest his soul. We'd come on the weekend to see the latest play. He'd always pretend to be uninterested, but I could tell he was excited inside. He was just one of those kind of guys, really, thinking about it now. Really, Polly? So what's your favorite play? Oh, well, I like so many. There was one in particular, but I can't recall the name anymore. Oh, it was a very famous one, too. Something by Shakespeare? Oh, um... No, nothing. One more bell that doesn't ring anymore. I've always been forgetful about the plays we used to see anyway. Oh, and my husband would get angry at me for forgetting what we saw. He'd go on for hours retelling what the play was about. His eyes were so sparkling, like a happy young boy. I see. So, what's your favorite play? Oh, I almost forgot, Mr. Morgan. We're going to have another guest soon. I have to get back and get things ready. Sorry for having to hurry away. I'll see you back at the hotel. Zack, I think she could embarrass the toughest of the FBI's interrogators. She successfully avoided answering my question, Zack. Amazing. Oh my, my pot is getting cold. Hey, mister, my pot is getting cold. You are... who? What are you saying? I'm Sigourney. Sigourney. Sigourney, okay. Now, what is the matter? Can you explain? No time for chatting. I need to hurry. My pot is getting colder. Oh, you're useless. Zack, we've met all sorts today, but really, she takes the cake. Amazing. Jim, thanks for your help in the forest. How are Isaac and Isaiah? They're fine. They really seem to love their grandpa. Well, I guess they do, son. I want to keep them away from the filth of the material world as much as I can. Their mother agrees, which is why she lets me take care of them so often. And that's why I want you to solve this case quickly and go home. Those rumors about that scar of yours do more damage than good around here. I guess I reek of the material world, don't I? I have to, in order to do my job. But I understand what you mean. I'd think the same if I was born in a place like this, Zack.
Hey, good looking. Nice speech. And you are? Oh, I'm Gina. I'm married to Jack. He runs the gas station. Call me the Rose. You look pretty... revealing. Oh, <laughs> this old thing? Oh, you should see some of my other clothes. You? Oh, now you are cool. That scar really is a turn-on. You should come to my station. I'll give you a little extra service. That would be great. I can't believe how expensive gasoline is nowadays. Some extra service would be great. Now, about my current case. Do you have any information on Anna? Have you seen anything suspicious? Oh, I don't know. Talk to my hubby about the difficult stuff, okay? This is getting us nowhere, Zach. I ain't got nothing to tell the cops. What about the FBI? Shut up! At least give me your name. I'm Jack. They call me Raging Bull. That's a manly nickname. If you want info, it'll cost you. I only talk to Ben Franklin. You know, first impressions are important. I can detain you for a few days, and maybe you'll become more fun to meet. <laughs> <sighs> Zach, this is a waste of time. Let's go. Agent Morgan, I'd like to let everyone go home now. Let's go outside. Well then, Agent York, do you have any plans for this evening? I was going to head back to the hotel and go over my notes. I need to contact HQ and give a progress report, too. Okay, then let's call it a day here. Sounds good. Contact my office when you finish your report. We'll pick you up tomorrow morning. Diane, the owner of the art gallery, should be back soon. All right, then, let's do that. Hold on, Agent York. We're going out to eat at Nick's Diner. Would you like to come with us? The diner? That might be nice. Thomas is a great cook, but Nick is the real deal. No visit to Greenvale is complete without eating at the A&G. A very appealing proposition. Zach, what do you think? We can always go back to the hotel after eating dinner. Or go directly back to the hotel. You decide, Zach. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've been sheriff here for a long time now, and this is the worst murder I've ever seen. Our town is a little odd in some ways, but it's usually a peaceful place. We had our fair share of cases, but just the regular stuff. A high school kid shoplifting from the milk barn, maybe? Or some hot-headed kids fighting, fueled on liquor? Nothing more than that. Agent York, what kind of cases have you dealt with in the past? Not much different from those you've just mentioned. The case I was on until last month, well, the guy killed seven girls in a three-month period. He sawed their heads off from the neck and took them back to his house. He cleaned the skulls up and used them as utensils in his daily life, to eat from or as a urine cup. 
Huh. He hated women. That was his way of dealing with it. He'd fill skulls with ice, cola, and rum. Then he'd down it in one gulp. For him, that was a holy ritual. The question of his mental state was the pivotal point in the court case. Oh, man. For me, he was insane. A hundred percent. Drinking from the skulls, well, that is one thing, but... But those he had used to relieve himself, he would then just use them to drink from, too. Yeah, that was too much for me. It's just not sanitary. <clears throat> <clears throat> not sanitary? Uh, that's probably not the problem for most of us. What else? Ah, yes. An ingenious law school student raped over 800 victims. That was a nasty one. Thank you, Agent York. Now, let's talk about something else. You don't want to hear any more? That's a shame, isn't it, Zach? I was just about to get to the good part, too. Sounds like you live in a totally different world. I mean, you're like an elite agent who just jumped out from a movie or something. In your eyes, we must look like we're just playing cops and robbers. Ugh, I give up. I can't compete with you. Don't say that, Emily. The cases you have solved are all full-fledged crimes. A crime is a crime. Size doesn't matter. There is no big and small. Crimes always have a, a criminal and a victim. No victim will ever welcome a crime no matter what its size. So, fundamentally, there is no difference in size. Well said, Agent Morgan. We work day and night to preserve peace and order in this town. You understand that, right? Of course. But still, I don't view shoplifting and... Anna's murder as the same level of crime. Me neither. I never even dreamt that such a thing could ever even happen in this town. <laughs> I keep on expecting to see Anna here in this diner waiting on tables. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse us, Agent Morgan. <laughs> we should have made dinner a more uplifting experience. Let's call it a night. Okay. Good night, then.
Okay then, Zack. Let's go back over our progress. First the victim, Anna's death. She was found hanging from a tree in the forest. She was cut open with a knife from her chest down to her stomach. That was the direct cause of death. The strangulation marks and skull fracture were caused after death. Her tongue was also bit off and I found something inside her mouth. Do you remember what that was, Zack? That's right. We found the same red seed in her mouth. According to Emily, it was raining when Anna was killed, but traces of tears were still evident on her face. Which means the perpetrator killed Anna under a roof in the lumber mill and then carried her body into the woods after it stopped raining. We found numerous important pieces of evidence at the site of the crime. A total of four things. Knee prints in the grass. A wood chip with metal dust. A photo of a man with a tattoo on his back and... One other thing. Do you remember what that was, Zach? That's right. A broken stiletto heel. Aligning this with the other evidence suggests that two people came into contact with Anna's body prior to it being discovered by us. Those being the perpetrator who killed Anna and Miss Stiletto Heel. There is also the possibility that a third party carried Anna to the woods. That means we could be dealing with three people. Two or three people. In any case, Miss Stiletto Heel may have vital information. We need to find her next. We didn't use forensic methods, but we're still closing in on the criminal. <sighs> Have I forgotten anything? Ah, of course. The marks on her hand tell us that Anna was gripping something when she died. Do you remember that, Zack? What do you think she was holding on to? That's right, a round object. The marks on her hand suggest a piece mark. The man in the photo found in the woods had a tattoo of an upside down piece mark on his back. These two could well be related, but we don't know for sure. Next, the town folk. A few are worthy of special attention. Carol McLean, the singer and bar owner, She's Thomas's sister. Then there's Nick Cormack, the owner of the diner. Both of them seem to be hiding something. There's Diane, the owner of the art gallery, who's out of town. Then we have problematic, old, rich, and eccentric Harry. Both will be tough to crack. Well, we just have to go one by one. I've been thinking. One of the biggest rewards here is the fantastic food. Enjoying food is cultural, and yet it's also a bit uncivilized. It's interesting how good food motivates me to work harder during investigations. Oh, and on Emily's back, it was strange to me. Hey, don't take that the wrong way, Zach. I wasn't getting all excited or anything. But it did make me feel strange, nostalgic, and sad almost. It's starting to rain. I think this case may take a while. Ellie! Last time, Ellie! I'll eat later. You'll eat right now, young lady. You need to listen to your mother. I want to hear the rest of the story. Eat your lunch, then take a nap. Then I'll tell you the rest. But I want to hear it now. There's 
There's no need to rush things. You must live your life at the pace that is right for you. Are you thirsty? You must be very thirsty. You only take milk with your coffee. Coffee with milk, that's all. Who are you? My name is Becky. What are you doing here? My name is Becky. Anna's friend? My name is Becky. After your throat is quenched, you must do what you must do. Take a sip of coffee and go. Huh? Me. That's me when it happened. Zack, this case looks like it's directly related to us. I do not know how yet, but I do know I need some coffee. George said he'd have someone pick us up in the parking lot. Let's get some breakfast with Polly first.
<laughs> Whoa there! Did you need something? No, I was just passing by. I didn't think anybody else was here other than Polly. The door opening like that just, it surprised me, that's all. I'm Kaysen, Forrest Kaysen. Nice to meet you. I travel a whole lot, you see, selling tree saplings. Just the usual salesman doing the usual road trip. Sometimes I feel, I don't know, like a jolly old bumblebee spreading pollen. FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. I get it. You're the Special Agent Scarface that everyone's yakking about. Nice to meet you, Francis. Special Agent Scarface? I'd need a bigger scar to live up to that name. Call me York. That's what everyone calls me. What? <laughs> you got it. York. Is this your first visit here, then? No, sir. Actually, I've been coming here once or twice a year for, oh, a while now. I don't get much business here, but it sure does make a fine vacation. I mean, it's a gorgeous hotel at a bargain price. It's so relaxing in these parts, too. Oh, I just love all the nature. I feel so relaxed here. <laughs> Say hi to Willie. Oh, don't worry, he's a good boy. Do you like dogs? Hey, Willie, how are you doing? <laughs> he's pretty smart, too. Oops, before I forget, let me give you this. It's just a sample of what I sell. Uh, thank you. How kind of you. So, what brings the old FBI out here? Sounds like more than just a vacation. A murder, actually. The perpetrator is still out there. Try to stay indoors at night and during the rain. We want to prevent it from happening again, okay? Oh, it's a darn shame. Places like this used to be the safest in America. Could I ask you something? Do you know a lot about seeds? Seeds? Gardening, huh? You don't look like a green thumb, but let me tell you, though. I'm pretty much the only one who can make those saplings sprout. There's a trick to it that can't really be passed on, you know? It's like, oh, the secret of making a good smoked ham, something like that. But you know, once they sprout, you don't need to do much. You can leave it be, and why, it'll turn into a big tree no matter what happens. Kind of like those stocks that politicians buy that just keep growing and growing. Well, you just wait and see. This town is gonna love them. <laughs> right. We were just about to go take a morning stroll, so I'll get going. Good luck now with that case. Thanks. Zach, do you remember what the coffee said? Forrest Kaysen. F. K. This show has just begun. Breakfast looks as good as yesterday's. I hope you enjoy it. I will, and thank you. I just met Kaysen, actually. Ah, oh, good old Mr. Kaysen. Did he give you a sapling? As a matter of fact, he did. Don't tell me he gives one to everyone he meets. No, no, only to the people he feels comfortable with. He told me. He must feel really comfortable with me. He must. Is there anyone he hasn't given a sapling to? Mustard? Okay, I'll just get it from the kitchen then. No, mustard has nothing to do with it. I was wondering if you know of anyone that Kaysen didn't give a sapling to. Oh, too much pepper. 
I did think it might be. I'm sorry. Oh, Zach, I forgot. We'll never get anything out of her, will we? Forrest Kaysen. He's hiding something. You think so too, right, Zach? But no need to rush. All secrets are hidden until they are inevitably divulged. The powers of entropy. The world exposes everything and causes chaos. Just like this coffee. Good morning, Agent Morgan. Did you sleep well? Morning, George. Dreamland was quite nice. You do look well rested. Oh, I was up practically all night doing paperwork. Thomas helped me out so I was able to go home and get some sleep, but not enough. Diane got back into town late last night. We should give her a visit. Which means going to the art gallery, correct? She lives and works in the office there, so it's the only place to find her. The gallery is open from 10 to 1700. Time for some art appreciation. A cultural activity in such a small countryside town. Amazing, Zach. The gallery is called Muses Gallery. The Muses were the nine daughters of the goddess of memory in Greek mythology. Ah, uh, it's just like Diane to name it that way. Is she that intelligent a woman? Oh, uh, maybe. You'll see for yourself soon enough. Did you see how Emily reacted, Zach? I sense that this Diane is not popular among other women. I can't wait to meet her. The gallery is on the north side of town. Take the road along the lake and go north. An art gallery in such a small town. Am I prejudiced to think that it doesn't seem to fit? Greenvale and every small town has every right to enjoy art. That's right. Small towns tend to be full of highly cultured people. Although I can't say I've ever been to the gallery myself. George, what about you? Are you into art? Actually, yes. I like going to the gallery. It's very relaxing there. Really, George? I never knew that about you for all this time. Emily, please. I'm just as cultured as everyone else. Some people just have sides to them that you'd never expect. <sighs> By the way, about Diane, the owner of the gallery. Is she the type that isn't very appreciated by other women? What do you mean? Exactly what it sounds like, Emily. Is she very attractive, especially to the opposite sex? So you're asking if she's sexy, right? Well, she does always wear high heels. And definitely, it's uh, hard to explain. But that doesn't make me biased, okay? She just seems to, to look down on people. She always has. I just don't like people like that. That must be because sex appeal has no effect on you. Now that's out of line. I'm sorry, Emily. I didn't mean to poke fun at you. You just reacted so strongly to Diane's name. I did not. It, it's like you're suggesting I'm the total opposite of her. Is that it? Oh, Emily, that's not what anyone is suggesting. Let's just drop this conversation, okay?
looks more like an old mansion than an art gallery. Diane liked the building so much she turned it into an art gallery. She left the exterior untouched and had the insides redone. So she's rich. She bought this place, didn't she? Does that answer your question? Indeed it does. Well, George, Emily, I want to talk with Diane alone. Will you wait here for me? Uh, don't tell me you still don't trust us. No, that's not it. But this is very important to me. I always make sure that I meet with the important ones, one on one. Otherwise, it's difficult to sense the subtle reactions of the suspect. This is just how I do things, and I'd appreciate your understanding. But, go on then. You're not going to listen to us anyway, are you? You're starting to understand me, George. Well then, Zach, let's go and meet Lady Diane. Hello? Hello? No reply. Let's take a look around then, Zach. <laughs> Hello, Olivia. Do you like art? Yes. Yes, I do. Well, I, I mean... I, I like trees. Trees. Okay. Ah, but I see because these are all tree paintings. Do you come here often, then? Uh, well, um, no. Just sometimes. I'm sorry, I really need to get back to the diner. Zach, she was lying about something. She said trees, not paintings of trees. She doesn't need to come here to see trees. There's tons of trees outside.
this. Call this a painting. A bit primitive with poor composition. Hardly the work of a master. But strangely, though, it powerfully exudes a soft, warm feeling. On the back it says, Guardian of the Art Gallery in fresh strokes. So someone added that recently. Guardian of the Art Gallery. Wouldn't that be Diane? And why is this painting here? Like I said, there's no point in you having this. I can put it to far better use. I'm taking it with me, okay? That's fine by me then, as you wish. The FBI agent, right? Just wait a moment, please. I'll be right with you. So there's no way you could have been at the scene of the crime. That's right. I was drinking at the bar with Nick until early morning. I'm sure if you ask him about it, he'll say the same. Very well. I'll be sure to do that. One other thing. That argument with Carol just now. She's always like that. She thinks of me as an enemy, always bickering at what I say. Is there any reason for that? Perhaps because someone she liked ended up with me in my bed? That would explain it, yes. If I may be so bold, who was the lucky man? Oh, I sleep with anyone I wish. Anyone I prefer to sleep with. I guess she had her eye on one of them, but I don't know who it was exactly. I could sleep with you, if you like. I'm flattered by your offer, but I don't think that would be appropriate. You're exactly the kind of woman a man in my job should never get involved with. Isn't that a shame, darling? I'll be frank, right now you are not a suspect, but both Zack and I are certainly feeling shaky about you. If you want to remain in the clear, just watch yourself from now on. Oh, you don't know, do you? Artists and art lovers, we love a good thrill. Thank you for your help. I have nothing further to ask you at the moment. Goodbye.
I had a chat with Diane. She said she was at the bar drinking with Nick at the time of the murder. We need to confirm her story. Let's talk to Nick at the diner. Very well, Agent Morgan. I have to head back to the department and clear up some paperwork. Go with Emily to the A&G diner. Okay, then. I'll show you the way. The diner's open from 9 to 2100. Just as we suspected, Zack. Diane is the key to this case. I have a feeling she will lead us right to the criminal. That's Kaysen. Looks like the show has just begun, and it has an all-star cast. Emily, do you know a man named Forrest Kaysen? Kaysen? Yes, I, I know him. The, the sapling salesman, right? He always uses strange comparisons when he talks. I'd like to know more about him. What does he do when he comes to town? He's a salesman, so I guess he you know, sells things. Maybe he comes on vacation. I, we haven't seen many tourists recently, but he comes pretty often. Is that all? Well, now that you mention it, he seems quite friendly with the Ingrams, with Isaac and Isaiah. Maybe you should ask them about Kaysen. Okay, I will. Emily, don't you find it a bit suffocating to be around George so much? Well, we aren't always together. And anyway, I've gotten used to him. Impressive. Women are very adaptable. No, it's not like that, actually. I mean, George is hard-headed, sure, but he's also a hard-working man. That's why the townsfolk trust him so much. The very epitome of the rural sheriff. That's right. He isn't some hotshot FBI agent. This place isn't like the city. Everyone knows everyone else. What about you and Anna? Were you too close? No, not close, really. I don't seem to have much in common with teenagers nowadays. All they talk about are boys, clothes, and accessories. I don't have much interest in any of those things. There is a gap between a teenager and being in your 20s. Everyone's different, that's all. Me and you, too. Zach, I'm not liking the way this conversation is heading. Let's concentrate on driving instead.
Let's just focus on getting to the diner and cut the chit-chat. A&G Diner. Wonder what the A and G stand for. Any ideas, Emily? Nope, I don't know either. Air and gravity, perhaps? Access and games? Aliens and Godzilla? Who knows? Is it important to know? I mean, why don't you just ask Nick? Oh, I will. But first, I need to eat. Wonder what's good here. Welcome, Mr. Agent. Hi, Olivia. Let me have your special for today. And some fresh coffee. Our special today is turkey. A turkey and gravy sandwich. Sound good? Oh, perfect. Emily, you eat something, too. It'll be on the FBI. Okay, then. I'll go all out. I'll have the T-bone steak. I usually can't order it because it's a little too expensive. <laughs> This is Olivia Cormac. Okay. I am here for Mr. Stewart's lunch. <laughs> if it is ready, I thank you a bunch. Yes, of course. Just a moment. Here you go. The usual. One turkey, strawberry jam, and cereal sandwich. Sounds like the sinner's sandwich. Self-inflicted punishment to atone for past sins. He's setting an example. Mr. Francis York Morgan, you should try this wonderful lunch. It's more than a delicious, tasty crunch. So says Mr. Stewart. No, that's fine. I've just ordered my own lunch. Mr. Francis York Morgan, I, that is, Mr. Stewart's order is delicious, I should mention. And Mr. Nick Cormack is a genius for creating this perfection. So says Mr. Stewart. Still, I have a hunch I might not like it. You sure that sandwich is that good? Mr. Francis York Morgan, Making decisions based on intuitions is always a sign of bad FBI agents. So says Mr. Stewart. Harry, you're right. I'll give it a try. This is fantastic. It's really good. Olivia, I'm sorry, but can I change my order? I'll have what Harry is having. Nick and Diane. They hardly make the perfect couple, do they? Is it widely known that they go drinking together, just the two of them? To be honest, I don't pay attention to these things. 
Not into local gossip? Well, when I moved here, I was still in high school, and I kept wearing the same wild clothes from my school in Seattle. I was young back then. And before I knew it, there were rumors all over the school. She'll screw anyone. That's what they said. Totally unfounded, of course. Anyway, after that, I just sort of chose not to really trust gossip. I get where you're coming from. I used to dress like a hardcore punk rocker when I was in high school. <laughs> you? A punk rocker? <laughs> Nobody took my side. Even when I had good grades, people rejected me just because of what I wore. I was young back then, too. <laughs> Even still, I just don't see you as a punk rocker. <laughs> and you laugh? Look at you. No makeup on, dressed in uniform, eating a steak for lunch. Okay, back to work. Let's talk to Nick. There's something I'd like to confirm with you, Olivia, if that's okay. Yes. Well, so long as it doesn't take too long. First, what were you and Nick doing on the night of the murder? I was here in the diner. Nick said he was going to the bar for a couple of drinks. Does he go to the bar often? Leaving you to hold up the fort? Y yes he says he enjoys the conversation with Diane. I thought they went drinking again together that night. Do the three of you ever go drinking together? Well, you see, I'm really not into art. And your husband is well versed in the arts then, I take it? Oh yes, um, looking at art and talking about it is his way of relaxing. <laughs> People just aren't what they seem like a certain someone who was into punk rock ten years ago. You are absolutely right, Emily. But you can be an art lover and a liar at the same time. One more thing, Olivia. You just said that you aren't interested in art. That's right. And... So, how come I bumped into you at the art gallery? Didn't seem like Nick brought you there. You were there alone. I... Well, I like trees, is the thing. That's why I went there. Surely you'd be better off in the forest rather than an art gallery, then. Uh... I think you went to the gallery not to see trees, but to see Diane, right? Uh... <sighs> you don't want to answer? Or perhaps this isn't the right place to ask. M meet me in the backyard. You can get there from the parking lot. I'll wait for you there for an hour after we close up. They close at 2100. Should we get something to drink and wait? Thank you. 
Agent York, what do we do now? I want to hear what Olivia has to say. Let's kill time until the diner closes. Okay, then I'm gonna make a trip back to the department. I'll see you in the backyard later. Okay, sounds good. See you later then. Zach, about Olivia. I presume she wants to tell us something about Nick and Diane. Let's hope it's not just something for the gossip columns. Zack, don't you think there are a lot of good-looking women in this town? It's like heaven compared to the town we grew up in. Do you remember Liz, the prom queen? Elizabeth Scott Moore. She could be royalty with a name like that. But you know, she was like an actress from a B-movie, wasn't she? Bleached blonde hair, too much makeup, clothes showed off her cleavage, and that mole by her mouth. Say, Zach, were you with me back then? You know, that mole was made with makeup, right? We happened to be on the same bus once. I saw her drawing it on with makeup. I wasn't surprised, I guess. Just impressed that she would go that far to create that image. Do you remember that movie we went to go see that day? I'll give you a hint. It was the fourth in a popular series and was produced by Menahem Golan's Canon Films. Figured it out, Zach? Think it over then. Call it your homework until next time.
To recap, the movie was the fourth sequel in a series that started in 1978. That's right, Zack. It was Superman 4, The Quest for Peace. Lex Luthor was back. It was played by Gene Hackman. That alone made it a must for all us fans. I don't remember much more about it, though. I'm sure there was more trivia about it. Still forget 4. Richard Donner directing 1 and 2. Now those two were great movies. Christopher Reeve really shined as Superman. Actually, Zack, I've got a confession to make. Promise not to tell anyone because I'd be really embarrassed. I actually liked the first two Superman movies more than the first two Star Wars movies. I think John Williams did a better job with the theme song for Superman. But whenever I try to hum it, it always turns into the Star Wars song somewhere along the way. <laughs> I know it's strange, Zack. I know. So, Zack, which Richard Donner film do you like the best? No need to hurry. Take some time and think it over. Now then, young fella, how do you feel about your current vehicle? My vehicle? It's a piece of crap, but I'm not here to talk about that. Then how about a little treasure hunt? Listen up, young man. My junkyard is actually a mountain of treasure. All kinds of treasure lies in those mountains of junk. The problem is, there's so many, I've lost track of where everything is. <laughs> You've caught on already. I can see it in your eyes. I need you to head out in the yard and find certain things for me. If you help me out, I'll customize your car a little. What are you talking about? Didn't I tell you to shut up and listen to your superiors? Now will you do it or not? I don't see any reason to refuse. Well said. First, I'll need some low gear parts. With that, I'll be able to boost the engine of your car. You'll find one around E5. Go! Don't just stand there, get going!
This is it. This will save your life someday, son. You sure know how to exaggerate. You imbecile. Engine boost is vital for bringing back soldiers alive from war. Engine boost? Of course. Engine boost is the basis of everything. Let me tell you a war story, son. I was leading my unit at the very front line. Things were bad, and sanitary conditions were worse. Endless guerrilla attacks were stripping us of our manpower. Everyone was tired to their limits. There was one sergeant who really rubbed me the wrong way. The boys like to call him Crybaby Timothy. He really gave me headaches, I can tell you. How? Just by breathing. His posture was bad. He was weak, slow, easily distracted. I have no idea who thought he was capable of combat in a war zone. He endangered the lives of every member of the unit. Stomach pains. The worst stomach ache ever. Every one of us. It was just cooking. He was using food that was contaminated. I flew into the dugout toilet like an Apache chopper returning to base. I have to tell you, it was a close call. My engine was boosting. And that's what got me there safely, right in the nick of time. What happened to the unit? You really want to know? It was a terrible sight. Powerful, athletic men reduced to walking dead. Blinking like crazy, shaking with pain. Their confidence and self-esteem were all crushed. They almost didn't recover. An interesting story. <laughs> so you see the need for engine boost now, do you? I'll keep my side of the promise and get to work on your vehicle. That badge on him is for a sergeant. Looks like it was sewn on something else before it was sewn onto his shirt. I wonder what that's all about. I put in longer pistons and optimized your lower gears. That should add boost to your speed when you accelerate. But there's still plenty of stuff I can do to make your car go faster. Just come see me again and I'll customize your car a little more. I went to see every Richard Donner movie on the day they premiered. Every single one. Goonies, Lost Boys, the Lethal Weapon series, but my favorite has to be Lady Hawk. That was back in 1985. Same year as Goonies. Both Rutger Hauer and Michelle Pfeiffer really shine in that one. But more than anything, it's the story setting that was really good. A love story about a cursed knight that changes into a wolf at night, and a cursed maiden that changes into a hawk during the day. Very romantic. Don't you think so, Zack? They can only be together at dusk, right between day and night. Together as humans for only a brief moment. Perfect setting for a fantasy movie. Hmm. I just had a thought, Zack. I really like those movies that have women changing into animals. Can you tell which movie I just remembered? That's right, Zack. With Nastasia Kinski in the lead role. 
Now that was a fantastic movie. But I better concentrate on driving. We'll finish this later. Hello? Thomas, have you ever eaten Emily's cooking? <laughs> what? Hey, what exactly are you asking? I was just wondering what you thought of her cooking, that's all. You know, perhaps an unbiased opinion of one who is himself a fantastic chef. So how about it? Have you eaten her cooking? I have. Just once. And how was it? Well. That's not an easy question. Honesty is the best policy. How can I say this? Cut it out, Agent York. He's pleading the fifth. He has the right to remain silent. Don't try and force him to say something. He has the right to an attorney. Uh, George, and what are you trying to say? Anything I say may be used in a court of law. Let's just let the topic of Emily's cooking go, okay? I can't do that, George. I want to know. I guess it's just my curiosity. So tell me, Thomas. Well, for lack of a better word, let's just say <laughs> it's Amazon-style cooking. Ah, that was well said. I'm impressed. <laughs> uh, uh. Oh, you were lacking words, were you? <sighs> let's get back to work. We have Nastasia Kinski in the lead role in Paul Schrader directing back in 1981. That's right, Zach. Cat people. About a woman who turns into a leopard when she falls in love and then eats the person she loves. I thought it was romantic. Real romance right there, Zach. Oh, Nastasia was perfect for that role. Casting her made that movie a success. Malcolm McDowell as her brother was also a good call. 
He's like a panther even without any of that special Hollywood makeup. Now the name Malcolm McDowell rings another bell. You know the movie I'm talking about, right, Zach? Don't tell me you're thinking about Clockwork Orange. Malcolm McDowell, come on, it's pretty obvious. Blue Thunder. Came out in 1983, was directed by John Badham. Malcolm plays the bad guy in that one. He just totally outshines the hero, Roy Scheider. At least I think so. I have to say, not many people agree with me about Blue Thunder. Zach, if you disagree with any of my opinions about movies, just come out and speak your mind. Okay? Just speak your mind. Zach, we can take a rest if you're tired. Well then, Olivia, talk to me. Y yes In the beginning, Nick only went to the gallery during the day, but he went so often at some point he became friendly with Diane. They started going out drinking together, and now he doesn't come home until early morning. He always 
Charlie says that they were only drinking when I asked. He blames me for not being able to talk about Turner and Rembrandt. Which of course I can't, can I? So what can I say? Finally, I couldn't take it anymore. So I followed him. He did go to the bar, to start with. Diane was there too. But the real problem is where they go to next, right? So I waited outside the bar to see where they might go. And, and they eventually left the bar and headed for the art gallery. But it was, it was already early morning, but it was still dark. Just before going inside, Diane turned around. It should have been too dark to see me, but I swear, her eyes looked right at me. They seemed to flash for a moment. I was so rattled that I left and went home. The next day, Anna was found dead. I, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> I went to the gallery to talk with Diane about it, to confront her. Once I was there, I couldn't find the courage to go through with it. Then I saw you there, and I just felt I had to go home. Nick has been seeing Diane every night recently. He just left for tonight, too. I, I, I really don't know what to do. <laughs> York, we ought to take Nick in for questioning. No, not yet. This alone isn't enough. Emily, answer me. This is Emily. Agent York is with me, too. I've just received word from Thomas at the Sheriff's Department. Something has happened at Becky's house. He was called in by Quint, but he wasn't making any sense. We have no further details. I've sent Thomas over there. Can you go back him up? Yes, sir. One other thing. It sounded like he said, raincoat killer. This may well be related to the murder case. Take all due precautions. <gasps> no! It couldn't be! Nick? Oh, please, no! What can I do? <laughs> Olivia, calm down. Emily, take care of Olivia. I'm heading over to Becky's. She lives in the big house over by the lake. Hurry! I just hope this isn't anything serious. Damn it, Zach. We may have screwed up during the investigation. Zach, I have a bad feeling about this. Becky's house is by the lake.
I'm sorry. That's all he would say since I got here. Quint, tell me, what did you see in there? Damn. Damn. Did you see the raincoat Damn. killer? Damn. Thomas, did you see Nick here? Oh, Becky. No. When I got here, he was already like this. I know he should be here soon. Call George and tell him to get over here. And wait out here. I'm going inside. Once they both get here, follow George's orders, okay? Yes. But Agent York, isn't it dangerous to go in there alone? Don't worry. Zach is with me. Zach, let me smoke one first. I need to clear my head so I can take everything in. That's a strange coincidence. Look, red velvet, just like the place where Anna was murdered. Too much noise. We're still missing a vital piece of the puzzle.
Huh. <sighs> Yeah. 
Zack, this is a waste of time. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> 
Very bad, Zack. The raincoat killer gave Becky a visit. Hold on. Can you hear that? Is it rain? No, it's the shower. Zack, the bathroom, quick! here George stay back she's trying to speak we don't have time she's dying Thomas cut that wire no! we must get her to the hospital immediately what? Uh, uh, what? Uh, <laughs> what are you doing get out of the way I'll do it no, no! don't George stop
Got us good this time, Zack. Oh, oh. My dear sister, I'm so, so sorry. I was a fool to fall for a man like him. I don't have the words to apologize to Anna. I left her there. She was suffering so much, and I just ran away. I know he wanted to kill me too. But I'm not going to let him get away with this. I followed him after he was finished. He carried Anna into the woods. Anna was holding on to that precious locket of his. He couldn't remove it from her hand, even though she was dead. But she let go of it for me, though. It was like she gave it to me. So I brought it home. I might be able to bring Anna's killer down with it. I want you to see it. I know even he wouldn't dare to harm you. He'll catch me, though, if I go into town. I'm trapped in my house. So I've asked Isaac and Isaiah to deliver it. They totally believe that Anna became a goddess. I believe so, too. She looked so beautiful as though she might smile back at any moment. I have something else to confess to you. I borrowed a pair of your shoes without asking and broke the heel on one of them. I'll send them along with the locket. I'm sure the shoe can be fixed. So Becky is Miss Stiletto Heel, and she gave the locket to the twins. Must be the special secret Lily told us about, Zack. We'd better go and see her first thing tomorrow. Emily, who might this sister be that Becky was referring to here? That would be Diane. Didn't you know Diane and Becky were sisters? I should have known, Zack.
Oh, I can't believe it, man. Now that's heavy. Me neither. When did Becky stop coming to work? I think it was like from the day Anna was killed, man. Yeah, 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 that's right. She was, she was totally depressed about something. Quint called for her to let us know she wasn't coming in for work. She must have been totally in shock, the poor thing. So you took the twins along to cheer her up. That's right, hun. If only I knew it would be like this, I'd have spent more time talking to her. You told me about a special secret between your children and Becky. Yes, of course. What about it? It seems Becky handed them an item before she was killed. Any idea what that might be? Now that you mention it, they had a box about this size, which they said was very important. That's it. I'd like to talk to them about this in person. Where are the boys now? They went out, actually, with Mr. Kaysen. They mentioned going to the community center today, hon. There is plenty of space to run around over there. Kaysen, do you know him well? Oh yeah, he's a good guy. He always brings us gifts from his road trips. The kids love him, so we let him take them out every once in a while. You know, for a little quality time with the missus. <laughs> okay, I understand, but the situation calls for urgency. I'll go and look for them myself, and if they come home without running into me, could you let us know? Sure, of course. I'll contact the department. Where is it? Where? Where could it be? Her dress. Oh, Sally. Sally, Anna's mother? She's acting up again. She's been like that ever since she heard the news. What exactly is she doing? <sighs> Got no idea, but I guess she's in like, you know, shock or something. The way I look at it, her daughter's death hasn't really sunk in the right way. Totally, man. I feel sorry for her. Come on, let's go. Lily, have you seen Anna's dress, dear? I can't find it anywhere. Zach, the wheels are turning. Not in the right way. You feel it too? Isaac and Isaiah aren't here. They're apparently out with Kaysen. Let's go look for them. With Kaysen? Sounds like a long story. Any ideas where to start looking? Lily told me where they went. No problem. And today, we're stuck here having to search for lost children. They're not lost. We're the ones who are lost. And so we are, Emily. Zach, we may as well have fun if we're getting lost. You sure know how to take your time in a time like this. Two people have been murdered in our town. And now two young children are at the center of it all. I just can't come to grips with it yet. Crime will happen wherever there are people. And that's why we have our jobs. Might be easier for you because you don't live here. These were people that I knew that were killed. And the murderer might be someone who lives here in this town. It's really depressing. I know. But someone has to bring this murder to justice. You're right, I know. but. Agent York, sometimes I just think I'm not really cut out to be a cop. Not true, Emily. You have the potential to be a superb law enforcer. 
You can be emotional at times, but you also possess what's most important. I do? What do you mean? What do you think? A sense of justice. Justice? <laughs> I must admit, I I'm surprised to hear such a... How should I say this? Such an obvious answer. I thought you'd say something else. Obvious or not, I joined the FBI in order to do what's right. And that's what's important. I understand, but still, you seem... Uh, I'm sorry. I, I need some time to think. Whatever do you want to think about? Justice. I want to think about justice. Zach, she's quite the philosopher, isn't she? Then again, death makes everyone a philosopher. According to Lily, Isaac and Isaiah should be here. Then let's go and find them. Hello again, Isaac and Isaiah. I hear you're teaching Willie to do tricks. What's your secret? It's easy. Really simple. If he does it right, we give him a treat. A cookie if he does it right. I see. You're very clever. So, tell me, you two. Could you perhaps tell me your other special secret with Becky? No, we can't. It won't be a secret if we tell. Uh, I'm not telling. We promised Becky. Well, that's a problem. Because I also made a promise to Becky. I promised to catch the bad man who murdered. But I can't keep my promise if I don't know what the secret is. Do you see? She told us to give Diane a box. It wasn't that heavy. We took it to the art gallery and gave it to Diane. Is that all Becky gave you? Um, just when we were leaving to take the box to Diane, Becky called us back. She handed us something. It was small and round. She told us to keep it safe in our pocket and give it to Diane. And then you met Carol on your way? Yep. I took the round thing out of my pocket, and we looked at it. And then she talked to us. We told her that we were on an errand for Becky. She said she'd do it for us. But we told her no, because Becky asked us, not her. We promised Becky to do it ourselves. So Becky did entrust the locket to them. And now Carol has it. Right, Kaysen? Huh? You were in the room when Carol took the locket back from Diane. I saw you with Diane in the art gallery that day. Well, yeah, I, 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 I was there in the room, but, but I was only uh, chatting with Diane. Oh, then Carol burst in all angry looking. While Carol and Diane had their talk, oh, I, I just sat there like a frog. Yeah, so Carol took the locket from Diane, but that has nothing to do with me, right? Uh, yes, I believe so. But from this instant, you are now a key witness in this case. I'm afraid you can't leave town until you hear from me. What? Can you do that? This is all starting to sound a little like Alice in Wonderland. Which makes you Humpty Dumpty. Huh? huh? Isaac and Isaiah, thank you. I think I'll be able to keep my promise with Becky thanks to you two. How is Becky? Is she getting better? She'll come and help out at our store again, won't she? She'll come and play with us again, won't she? Boys, about Becky. Uh, that's right. Um, 
Becky is almost totally better now, but I don't think she'll be able to come and see you. I was told by Becky to keep this a secret, but she's actually a goddess of the forest, just like Anna. I think she's gonna be in the forest with Anna for a while. Cool, we'll keep this a secret then too. Wow, that's why Anna and Becky are such good friends. Okay, okay, Willie. You're happy too, aren't you? Zach, I hope Emily doesn't end up as a forest goddess too. Okay then, Zach. Let's go over what we found out recently about the case. First, Diane, the owner of the art gallery. She was out drinking with Nick Cormack in a bar on the night Anna died. Nick confirmed this, and so she has an alibi. But then we have what Nick's wife Olivia told us. According to Olivia, Nick and Diane not only went to the bar, but also went somewhere else that night. Do you remember where that was, Zach? That's right, the art gallery. Before entering the gallery, Diane looked back towards Olivia, almost as though she saw Olivia in the dark. Nick's behavior has also become more suspicious by the day. If Olivia is correct, then he is heavily involved in this case, but we have no conclusive evidence of that at the moment. The only thing we can say for sure is that Nick's whereabouts are unknown at the time of Becky's murder. He has no alibi for the crime, but that fact alone means nothing. So who was it that called Thomas to report trouble at Becky's place? That's right. It was Quint, Becky's boyfriend. He went to her house and saw the tragedy. Now, about Becky's murder. I'm embarrassed and mortified. Killer struck again while we were on the case. We found her bitten off tongue. A massive amount of red seeds that poured out of the blood. Then an inverted peace symbol, like the one seen at the site of Anna's murder. From the similarities, one can deduce that Anna's killer killed Becky. We also found one other important piece of evidence in Becky's room. Can you remember what that was, Zach? That's right. We found a sketchbook in Becky's room. She had apparently written a letter to her sister Diane. It revealed that Becky took a locket from Anna's body at the crime scene. She also admitted to borrowing a pair of Diane's stiletto heel shoes. So Miss Stiletto Heels was Becky. There was something else at the end of the letter. It said that she handed the locket and stiletto heel shoes to someone. Do you remember who, Zach? That's right, Zach. And from what Isaac and Isaiah told us, Carol offered to take the items to Diane, but the twins refused. They gave them to Diane themselves as they had promised. For some reason, Carol wanted the locket. She ended up storming into the gallery to take it from Diane. And when Carol took the locket from Diane, Casey just happened to be there. Is Kaysen involved in this, or was he just there by coincidence? I wonder what's so special about the locket, too. Why did Carol want it so badly? The questions are mounting. Come to think of it, Quint, the first witness, has no alibi for Becky's death. We checked the phone records, and his call definitely came from her house. Is it possible he attacked Becky and then called us from the scene? But everyone is suspicious one way or another. 
What should we do next, Zack? Okay, who's the most suspicious? That's right. Becky's sister and Carol's enemy, linked to both Nick and Kason, the elegant owner of the art gallery. Zack, that's our next move. We'll start with Diane. So, you want to find out everything there is to know about Diane? That's right. There's just too many things that we don't know. First, we need more intel about the relationship between Nick and Diane. How? Nick and Diane meet every night at the bar. Let's use that. George, we'll need you to stake out the gallery. What do you mean? Wait in the parking lot of the art gallery and tail Diane when she leaves. If she goes anywhere other than the bar, you let me know. Emily, you take the diner. Wait for Nick and tail him to the bar, too. As with George, if he goes anywhere else, then you let me know. Okay. Thomas, you keep a watch on them inside the bar. Yes, yes, I will. I'll be waiting in the parking lot of the bar. Once Nick and Diane are together, I will follow them wherever they go. What time do they usually show up, Thomas? Around the same time. Usually between 22 and 2300. Then at that time we do it, boys and girls. Zack, we need to be at Carol's bar at 2200. Looks like we have some time to kill. We can go to the diner and see how Nick and Olivia are doing. Zack, is there something here that you want to check out? We need to be at Carol's bar at 2200. We're free until then.
Sozak. This case turned into a multiple homicide. What kind of motives turn a criminal into a serial killer? Is it hedonistic? Ritualistic? Copycat crime? Sex-related? Cannibalistic? From the Bureau's statistics. These interesting ideas don't always really explain the real motive. They're just words. Phrases that the media uses to scare citizens. The spotlight falls on a mere 1% of all cases. Only the weird ones. You understand all this, right, Zach? No matter how bizarre a crime may appear to be, at the root, there is always rage and personal interest. Right, Zach? Most people simply don't kill for pleasure. But that kind of common sense never applies to our investigations. Maybe we're lucky. Or unlucky, depending on how you look at it. We end up working on those cases in that 1%. Do you remember, Zach, the first case we handled just after becoming a special agent? Now let's talk about this another time. I don't feel like it right now. Nick's still in the bar. Just as we planned, then. I wonder what happens next. Agent York, you're really enjoying this, aren't you? I have to admit, I envy that. Agent York, Nick is leaving the bar. What about Diane? She isn't here tonight. Emily, check that with George. George, can you hear me? Nick's leaving the bar. What's happening with Diane? No movement. Tell me what to do here. Stay put, George. I'm thinking Nick will head to the gallery. Let's meet up there. 10-4. Copy that. Agent York, it's Nick. Sorry to keep you waiting. Let's go. Okay. Time to play with the big boys, Nick.
We'd all have halos by now if I was driving. <sighs> I think someone's putting a curse on all the cars I drive recently. Oh. Agent York, Nick's getting away. Don't worry, time to get serious. Hold on, you two, this might get bumpy. Is Nick here? George? No, he hasn't showed up here. What about Diane? Any movement? No action here at all. Did something happen? Yes, a little. But George, something's different about you. Are you okay? Actually, I had a little drink while I was waiting. This is my first murder case, after all. I'm on edge, and I needed one. It was only a little, though. I'm still in control. Zach, Nick and Diane are probably both inside. George, you're sure you didn't see Nick? Positive. I haven't taken my eyes from the entrance all night. Not that I don't trust you, George. But I'm positive Nick is here. Is there another entrance? Not that I know of. Well, I'll go look for one. Help me out if you can, would you? Emily, I want you guys to... Wait out here, I know. I'm not going to fight you about this anymore. But promise me this. If there's trouble, then you'll call us in, okay? You might not think so, but we're a team. A team? That's what I think, at least. And I'm interested in you and Zach. I don't want anything to happen to you before I hear more about you two. Zack, did you hear that? She wants to know more about you. Isn't that a nice surprise? Amazing.
This is the entrance hall. Too much noise. We're still missing a vital piece of the puzzle.
shot. Nice shot. Nick. Agent Morgan, where are you? Answer me! Come on, open up! Call for assistance with the body. Wait! She's still alive. <sighs> Diane, don't move. Don't move her hands and stay still.
Thomas, call an ambulance. What? A what? Agent York, George, are you okay? Oh, yes, I'm okay. I think I'm too old to be an acrobat, though. Diane looks okay, too. She should be able to tell us who did this to her. God, I hope so. But you, George, quite a catch. I'm impressed. Hmm? George? Uh. Diane. Oh, yeah. what a beautiful place. The reason why we feel off is oh. many directions. There, Nick. You're under arrest for the attempted murder of Diane Ames. Huh. Back off! Uh, Don't touch me! Uh, I requested and Thomas will need a body bag too. He wants us to follow him. Shall we follow Zack?
Willie, are you out there? Kason, what are you doing in there? York, is that you? Thank God, I can't get this door open. Can you unlock it from your side? Kason, stand away from the door. Where's Diane? And what are you doing here? I was going to ask you the same thing. Well, let's just say I have my reasons, you know, pri private reasons. I don't really have to tell you, do I? Actually, you do. Diane just died a moment ago. What? You're not just a key witness now. You're now a suspect. And you need to tell me exactly what you were doing here. Well, I just, I just came here to talk with Diane to have a conversation. And I suppose that kiss mark on your cheek is from your conversation. This was just a spur of the moment thing. Which is exactly what killed Diane. Okay, okay. I came here to be with Diane. You happy now? We've been together before, a, a, a couple times. It's one of the reasons why I like coming to this town, see? This time is no different. I, I, I bumped into her in a bar in Seattle. I had some, some holiday coming up. Well, so, so I just took it and I drove her back here. I have a wife, you know, but, but we've been separated for a while. We're going through a divorce right now and I don't want her lawyer finding out. Anyway, how could I kill Diane if I was in a room locked from the outside? Two hours ago, me and Diane, we were taking it easy, drinking upstairs. We were, you know, enjoying ourselves. Then Nick had to show up. Well, then Diane had a sudden change of heart. She locked me up in here. I've just been here, waiting for her to come back, of course, but, but she didn't. I heard footsteps a couple of times, but they just passed by. Well, then I couldn't wait anymore, so I let Willie here out through the window. Then you showed up instead of Diane. Zack, Diane has become the third victim of our killer. And nada from questioning Nick. Nothing. Got no new leads from questioning Nick. He's taken the death of Diane really badly. In shock, the works. He claims to have liked talking with her about art. But he also had a problem with her views about men. He says that they argued, but not at a level that would lead to a murder. They were about to head out to the bar again together. But while he was waiting for Diane, someone knocked him out cold. He has no idea who it was, either. Of course, Kaysen looks like a prime suspect. But that door was locked from the outside. There was no other way in or out of that room. Which means there is no evidence of his involvement at this time. He did say something else. The footsteps he heard outside the room were not heels, but a man's boots. And Nick was wearing boots. But now that Diane's dead, no one can back up Nick's statement. Which is why we have Nick in custody and have to let Kaysen go free. That seemed like the only option, at least for now. One more thing, Zach. George looked terribly depressed. I guess this case is really getting to him. He's feeling responsible for the deaths of Becky and Diane. Take his rules and confidence away from him? I wonder what's left.
Well, of course, he'd still have muscle. Zach, let's get back to the hotel. First Anna, then Becky, now Diane. I'm not looking forward to writing this investigation report. Agent Morgan. York. Do you have a moment? What is it, George? There's something I'd like to talk to you about. Do you have any time later? Can't we just do it here? If possible, I'd like to go to a bar. Of course, we don't really have to. A bar? Now that sounds like a good idea. Zack, what do you think? We can go drinking with George, or turn him down and head back to the hotel. George, that scar on your cheek, where did you get it? This? Didn't I tell you? Well, it's not from work. I got it when I was a kid. A childhood injury. Tree climbing? I used to get a few scrapes myself climbing the big tree in our backyard. I used to climb it a lot. And fall out of it a lot. <laughs> this wasn't anything like that, though. It was my mother. She did it. I'm sorry, George. Don't worry. It's ancient history. The world is flooded with unreasonable violence. The strong overpower the weak, adults over children, men over women, and criminals over their victims. I have no memories of my father. He left before I knew him. My mother would hit me every time I asked why. And it didn't stop there. If I ate too slow, left my shoes scattered around, TV volume too loud, she found reasons to hit me. Hit me bad. The worst was what she called the tree punishment. She'd whip my back with these thin tree branches like a whip. Tree punishment was definitely the worst, I tell you. Just hearing those words used to make me shiver and want to pass out. And that's why I didn't want to show you those scars on my back. Every time after the tree punishment, she'd always say the same thing. This is hurting the tree more than it is hurting you. And me, being a naive, dumb kid, I believed her. I went to the woods to apologize to the trees. I kept asking myself, why is she hurting me this way? I thought long and hard about it. In the end, I just figured I'm weaker than her. That's why. It's the law of Mother Nature at work. The strong eat the weak. But now, you have the power to protect the weak. That's right. Perhaps I should thank my mother for guiding me into this line of work. York. I've been an arrogant fool, haven't I? And if it weren't for me, both Becky and Diane would still be alive. I could have saved them both. You know, it's almost like they died because of me. You're out of your mind. I invited you to this bar for a drink. But I guess this bar is my confession chamber, and I wanted you to listen. And to tell you, well, you must already hate me for causing all these problems, not following your orders. York, 
I'm sorry. I'll follow your orders from now on. You'll have my total cooperation. George, you've been as cooperative as you can be. You even invited an FBI guy to a bar for drinks. You've done a good job protecting this town. And the folks here respect you for that. Nobody can blame you for anything. Thanks. I do feel a little better. Hey, Carol. Becky is dead. Diane, too. We've got Nick in custody as a suspect. Nick didn't do it. Ah, I know. Carol, you took a locket from Diane, didn't you? A locket with this mark on it. I'm busy, gotta go. Sorry to keep you waiting, boys. Zack, Emily is already a goddess of the forest. Let's forget work for a bit and drink a little, shall we? York? Why is she here? I just thought the more the merrier. You know, to relax and get loose. Is this a problem? No, of course not. Pardon me, Emily, but I'm pooped. I think I'll just call it a night. George, I just got here and you're walking out on me? I was hoping the three of us could have a drink and let out a little steam. I'm afraid I've already had enough. And I already had a good man-to-man -man with York. So I'll see you guys.
I think George likes you, but he's avoiding you all at the same time. <laughs> How astute. There's a reason? Nothing worth going into. It's a thing of the past. <laughs> okay. He did ask me out when I first came to town. I was still in high school. But I never really considered him my type. And there's the age gap thing, too. I respect him, of course. I wouldn't have taken this job otherwise. So, did you move to this town alone? Of course not. I came with my parents. Tell me about them, then. Sure, why not? My dad dealt in stocks in New York. He was hardly at home when I was a kid, always working. Those pieces of paper were far more important to him than I was. Which is no different now, really. I, I don't see much of him. My mother? Totally different story. A wonderful person that I still respect. She was always kind and understanding. Not only that, but she would always help me find my way. She could be fierce, too, scolding me if I took a wrong step. We had our battles, sure, but all in all, she was a wonderful mother. Past tense? Yeah, she's gone now. Cancer, just before I graduated high school. She gave this to me just before she died. I take it with me wherever I go. It's what I treasure most. I'm sure she's very proud of you. I had a good time tonight. Good night. See you tomorrow. York. Yes? Please, don't lie to us, okay? I won't. Don't worry. I won't. How many years ago was it now? That multiple homicide of young girls in that college town in Illinois. All the victims were cut open from the throat to the crotch. Ripped right open. During the autopsy, a second stomach was found inside the first victim's body. Of course, she didn't naturally grow a second stomach. One of the stomachs belonged to someone else. As more victims piled up, there was one with two hearts, one with two livers, four lungs. Different organs each time. Of course, those extra organs didn't do the girls much good. Right, Zach? And they say too much is never enough. In the end, we arrested a professor at the med school. They found the body of his daughter dead and the missing organs at his house. Do you remember what he said when we took him in? I was ordered to restore those deformed bodies back to normal. And remember who he said ordered him? An alien. Well, of course, we couldn't arrest an alien, so we arrested the professor instead. Serial killers can't be caught by logic and common sense. I learned this the hard way. That first case taught me that. 
Since then, these cases just keep getting more and more complicated. It's a tough job. I thought getting experience while I was young would make the job easier. Zack, is there something here that you want to check out? Well, I'll join you if you like, but I do need to get that report written. Zack, let's go over our progress. From what Olivia told us, and the sketchbook we found at Becky's house, Nick and Diane became our primary suspects. There were a couple of reasons for this. First, Becky gave the missing locket to Diane. Also, Nick has no alibi for when Anna and Becky were killed. We followed Nick to the art gallery which led us, unfortunately, to our third victim. The third victim, Diane, was strung up in the entrance hall of the art gallery. Her hands were tied and a knife was sticking out of her chest. However, there was a marked difference from the previous crimes. Do you remember what that was, Zack? That's right. Diane was still alive. This suggests that very little time had passed since the crime was committed. Which means the criminal was still close by. It was someone near the scene. There are two possible candidates. Nick, who was knocked out in the entrance, and one other. Zach, who was the other person in the gallery? That's right, Casey. We followed Willie, good dog, all the way to him. Casey's statement came out as follows. He and Diane were in a physical relationship. That was why he visited the gallery. The two were in the middle of such a meeting when Nick showed up. Diane lost her cool and shut Casey up in the basement. Now what did Casey hear when he was locked up? That's it. The sound of boots passing by. Nick was wearing boots that day. Which means it was likely that Diane met with Nick in her room. Nick said he argued verbally with Diane about her playing around with men, but they eventually decided to go out drinking to make up. However, immediately after that, Nick was attacked by someone in the entrance hall and knocked unconscious. We saw the rest. Zack, do you think that Nick is our serial killer? Me too. Usha sent in a report too. He found a large volume of red seeds in Diane's stomach. This confirms her as a victim of the raincoat killer. Remaining leads. There is the locket which is in Carol's possession, the man with the tattooed back, and the upside-down peace sign. There's a lot left to answer. I hope the coffee will give us more guidance tomorrow. Zack, what did you think about George pouring his heart out? I was surprised. It's the end of a monarchy. And he called me York instead of Agent Morgan. Emily? What's going on? Do you know what time it is? 
I'm... I'm sorry. I... I couldn't sleep, so... I was drinking alone. My mother was a very kind woman. She always smiled so brightly. I baked cakes and cookies every day. She'd say that I needed the sugar because I spent so much time thinking. My father was always quiet. We never talked much. He was a federal agent, just like me. And he was hardly ever at home. The only words he ever had for me were harsh ones. I had a vivid imagination, and I remember he once said this to me. There are plenty of crazy things in this world. You don't have to go dreaming them up. And it's my job to make sense out of them. One day you'll understand what I'm saying. I found out later that my father was one of the first to ever use criminal profiling to catch bad guys. And so now I'm doing exactly the same job that he did. Like father, like son. Mm, can I ask you something? Shoot. Mind if it's something personal? Fire away. Who's Zach? <laughs> um, Zach is a friend of mine. Oh, so you do have friends. Yeah. He's my only friend. What kind of person is he then? Well, I, I've never seen his face. But he's always with me, and we discuss everything. When did you become friends? A long time ago. Back when I was a child. I was seven. I woke up one morning to hear my mother crying in the living room. This wasn't normal, so I headed in to see her. My father was there pointing a gun at my mother. I was so scared. I closed my eyes, so I, I don't remember much more. But I do remember the words my father said to me. At times we must purge things from this world because they should not exist. Even if it means losing someone that you love. When I came back to my senses, they were both dead. He shot my mother and then killed himself. Oh, I'm so sorry. Don't worry about it. Zach's with me. It was around that time that we became friends. I'm here. I'm with you, he said. I'll be here always. We can get through this together. Quite aside from that terrible scene in front of me, that voice seemed to make me calmer. And here we are, working together, getting through things. This is the first time I've ever told anyone about this. I wonder if Zack will get angry. <sighs> That's a sad story, but... I don't want you to take this the wrong way, but I'm sure there was a reason for what your father did. I know. I think maybe I became an agent to find out why he did what he did. Oh, oh yeah, York, I, I forgot to thank you. Thank me? For what? You saved my life. If you didn't save me at the gallery, I would have died along with Diane. No need to thank me for that. I'm pretty useless. I couldn't save Becky. I couldn't save Diane. What did you just say? Useless? <laughs> I was never expecting to hear you say that. Huh. There might be a modest guy in you after all. Finally, you noticed? You're a little slow, aren't you? 
may be hopeless, but not useless. Zach, do you think Emily got home safely? Anyway, I think it's more serious of a situation than I thought. Do you remember? Our conversation with Emily. She's really interested in you. I think she's starting to have certain feelings for you. If that's the case, Zack, you and I are rivals. This is a very serious situation indeed. Well, if it comes to that, let it be a fair fight. Agreed? Open this door. There is no turning back. You still want to enter? world because they should not exist, even if it means losing someone that you love.
Mr. Morgan, do you want a refill? Yes, thank you. Is the coffee that good, Mr. Morgan? Coffee is a vital investigative tool. I know exactly what to do now. It says to hurry. And the first letter of each line is H-A-R-R-Y. Hurry to Harry. Looks like the time that he was talking about has come. Let's go pay the problematic rich boy who owns half of the town a visit. Polly, I think I'm going to go see Harry today. Oh, really? He's a little strange, but I think he's the most trustworthy one around here. I think you'll have fun with him. If you say so, Polly, then we probably will. Of course! Now, give me your cup and I'll give you some more coffee. I'll see you later, Polly. Hey, am I still a suspect? No. Okay, well, good. My wife and I have been living separately for over three years now. Diane, she's a single woman, so this shouldn't be a problem. That's true. I feel so bad for Diane, though. Gosh, did, did you find out who did it? I can't discuss that. Yes, of course, I, I understand. You don't have to tell any of the folks around town about me and Diane, do you? No, I won't do that. But it's a small town. I'm sure the rumors have started already. Nothing to be ashamed of, right? What's there to worry about? Nothing in particular. No, nothing at all. I I'm clean. As clean as the sheets in this hotel. What's with that look? We don't have a problem, right? It looks like Kaysen is involved with another woman in town. We can only hope it isn't Emily. York, I can't find Thomas. Was he here? No, I haven't seen him. Have you tried the radio? I've been trying, but he's not answering. <sighs> what about Nick? No problem with him. He's calmed down a little. 
He's still saying he didn't do it. Nick said that Thomas disappeared sometime during the night. He kept calling for him, but Thomas stopped responding. I I'm a bit worried. George has asked for permission to search for Thomas. I understand that things have been hard for Thomas, but surely he's just resting at home. Uh, but I'm not against looking for him. Tell George that he has my blessing. Okay. As far as I know, Thomas always calls in when he needs a day off. We're human, and so we are limited. As far as you know, there haven't been any serial killings here before, right? That's right, but that's not... Emily, I'm going to see Harry today. What? Why? We have plenty of other leads to follow, don't we? He did invite me over, though. It would be bad manners not to accept. Are you really an FBI agent? I think the FBI would take a more logical approach to investigations. Oh, but Emily, serial killer does not stay within the boundaries of logic. Thus, you can't hope to capture such a killer using only logic. That's why I'm going to see Harry. You go with George and find Thomas. Okay, sounds like a plan. Great, thanks. Ugh, I was an idiot for thinking he might be a good pick. I really need to work on my taste in men. Zack, we've ended up with a third victim. That dive I made at the gallery ended up being a wasted attempt to save a life. It's a real mess, Zack. <sighs> dive. When's the last time I made a dive like that? Oh, I remember. Do you? It was in my late teens. We used to go to those concerts. You and I like punk rock, but we like different types of punk. You liked hard and heavy punk, like Crash and Sham 69. I liked the more twisted ones, like the Damned, Buzzcocks, Iggy Pop, and Joy Division. We used to talk for hours about the bands we really liked, but for some reason, neither of us listened to the Sex Pistols. I wonder why that was. It seems strange thinking about it now.
You know what? There was one band that we both liked. We went all the way to New York to see them play. Right, Zach? It took us hours to get to New York by bus. We got to the CBGB and we were so nervous we couldn't go inside. It took us 30 minutes to gather enough courage to go inside. And inside, we were shocked. Right, Zach? I'll never forget that feeling. It was like a blitzkrieg. Blitzkrieg bop. The Ramones. That song still makes me feel good. And that's a sign of a classic. But it's amazing I got in without being asked for ID. Those were the good old days. Rock and roll high school and Chinese rock. Sheena is a punk rocker and surfing bird. And I was so depressed when I heard the news of the deaths. Original punk is one of the greatest gifts left from the 20th century. Let's hope they're still rocking on wherever they are. Mr. Francis York Morgan, finally you have arrived. You are welcome to come inside. Mr. Francis York Morgan, Mr. Stewart has been waiting for you. To the meeting room you shall go to. The meeting room is through here. Please be kind. Be sincere.
Mr. Francis York Moore, please have some tea while it is hot. Too much coffee for your body will make it rot. You seem well prepared. Almost as though you knew I would be coming today. Mr. Stewart is particular about the best timing for all things. Now please, drink some tea and enjoy the good health it brings. I'm sorry, Harry, but I just don't like tea. Mr. Francis York Morgan, some tea with sugar is what's best admired by your body that looks so tired, so says Mr. Stewart. Harry, where did you get these seeds? Mr. Francis York Morgan, those seeds were found in our town in a certain specific place. More seeds are there, you will see, when you find that certain space. Come back to me and we shall talk after you find that certain place. So says Mr. Stewart. Harry, so you like to play games? Mr. Francis York Morgan, a hint for you to find this location. It is most crowded and most quiet, and gives a cold sensation. So says Mr. Stewart. All right. So you're not going to talk unless I find this certain place. I'll play along. Zack, let the treasure hunt begin. A crowded place, and yet it is very quiet there. Have you figured it out, Zack? It must be the graveyard. There's lots of people there, but none of them can speak. You see? So let's get going to the graveyard. So, Zack, about Emily. My first impression when we met her on that bridge is slightly different from what I think about her now. Don't you think she's pretty mesmerizing? And Zack, she seemed interested in you. Did you make a move on her? No, don't answer. I'm just asking. But if you like her, I won't stand in your way. But I'd like to hear the truth. Because this kind of stuff could affect our friendship, you know. Me? I'm just interested in her, that's all. It isn't love or anything. From what I can tell, she doesn't even seem to like me. 
It's pretty clear from how she acts when she's around me. As you know, Zack, I'm cautious with women. It's because I was badly burned in my last relationship. I really have no idea what women are thinking. That's my problem. You're pretty friendly with the ladies, aren't you, Zack? Maybe you should teach me about how to interact with women. Just as Harry said, it's crowded and quiet. Hey, Brian. Agent. Mr. Agent, how are you? Oh, uh, not bad. I'm, uh, just playing a little game with Harry. Game? A game? Oh, huh. Is that fun? We've only just started, Brian. The fun is about to begin. I'd like to ask you something, actually. Is there a tree in the graveyard that drops red seeds? Seeds? Red seeds? That? That tree does. And that one. And that one, too. All red seeds.
Zack, mission accomplished. Let's get back to Harry's. The reward better be good. But you know, about these seeds, they were right here under my nose. It's as if I was carefully carrying a bottle of water while walking in a pool. We're learning the countryside version of common sense the hard way, Zack. A human bone? This doesn't look related to the case, but shouldn't I let someone know? Anyway, Zack, there aren't many young women left in this town. Even Emily could be targeted next. We can't rule that out. All the more reason to catch the raincoat killer ASAP. And that means working closely together. We can work out the Emily situation later. Don't get me wrong, Zack. I mean, I'm not interested in Emily because she's female or anything. I'm just saying she's interesting. You know, as in interesting person. But by looking at her, she reminds me of something I used to feel. That's all. Like back when I first met you. You know, that feeling we all used to feel back when we were kids? Feeling safe while also feeling a need to protect. That kind of feeling. But Zach, who made me feel that back then? Anyways, we're getting closer one step at a time to cracking this case. I have a feeling it's going to get tough. Mr. Francis York Morgan, finally you have arrived. You are welcome to come inside.
Mr. Francis York Morgan, please proceed to Mr. Stewart's room. There he awaits you, I shall assume. Harry, turns out what you said was true, and I'd like to hear more. York, as you know, there's a powerful mystery surrounding these seeds. You've seen them at those other murders that took place elsewhere. And you've seen them deeply involved with the murders in this town. <laughs> That's right. But how do you know all this? York, you must. 
must be younger than you look. Youngsters tend to hurry so much that they let things slip right past them. What you need to do is slow this down a bit. That way you'll see what's really important. Let me tell you a story. Fifty years ago, when the war was over, just about when the communist red started to become a rising threat, our town constructed a huge clock tower. Then, soon afterwards, a serial killer wearing a red raincoat went on a killing spree. The legend of the raincoat killer? Stop playing games with me, Harry. That's nothing more than folklore. The FBI has no such record of a multiple homicide case in this town. York, Anna, Becky, and now Diane. Their deaths are real, not folklore, not legend. The raincoat killer is also real. But under a strict gag order, this murder case was never made public. In fact, one could say that it was completely erased from history. Tell me, who do you think would be able to do something like that? The military. Very good. A model student. But if there are no records about it, then how do you know it really happened? Good question, York. Why would I know this? The answer is very simple. I was there. I saw it with my own eyes. The brutal killer himself. But we can talk about the details of that encounter another time. What we need to talk about is your raincoat killer. The new raincoat killer, if you will. The new raincoat killer. Yes, let's call him that. After all, he's not the real one. What you want to know more about is the new one. Between 10 and 20 years ago, I noticed that these red seeds were special. And someone else did too. The human imagination can lead to tragedy sometimes. Someone linked the red seeds to the serial killer legend and said, So you're saying that the series of cases I've been following are all linked to this town. That's interesting, Harry. But there's no evidence to support that story. None of the criminals we caught for the other murders ever mentioned anything like that. It's your job. I 
I need you to bring those documents here to me. Once you've done that, I'll tell you everything I know. <laughs> okay, it's worth a look. And we may as well let the old man have his fun. Documents from a case that happened 50 years ago. Let's play along with the old man for a little longer, shall we? Zack, that means we need to head for the sheriff's department. So, where shall we go next? here that the FBI doesn't even have? What do you think, Zach? York! I told you! That's nothing more than local folklore! Harry said that he was there. The raincoat killer is a phantom. Made up to scare children long ago. I can't believe you fell for that from Harry, of all people. I agree with George. Harry likes to play with people. Play with their minds, too. George. Emily. Of course I don't believe him word for word. But you won't mind if I at least try to confirm that he's wrong, will you? <laughs> Well then, can you look for the files by yourself? 
I'm still looking for Thomas. Very well. Emily, open the filing room for him. They're here too, Zack. This might mean we're getting warmer to what we need. Too much noise. We're still missing a vital piece of the puzzle.
Zack, looks like we need to continue our search for the documents. George, I'll get right to the point. It looks like someone else has just removed the documents I'm looking for. Huh? Removed? The cabinet looks like it had been forced open. That's impossible. No one could break into there. No. Emily, there is one person that can access that room at any time. You don't mean... Thomas. It's too early to speculate. And profiling is my job, remember? More importantly, Emily, could you get me a coffee? A fresh one, if possible. Coffee? At a time like this? <laughs> Why now? Emily, please. This is very important. Some coffee. And bring some milk on the side. Zack, you know something, don't you? I'm getting us some coffee. So tell me what you know. Ugh. Zach, this is amazing. Even the taste of her coffee is thrilling, to say the least. What? No, nothing. This isn't the cup that Thomas always uses for me, is it? I'm sorry about that too, then. I just used a cup that was nearby. You have a problem with that? A problem? Not at all, my dear Emily. The coffee is perfect. Well, okay, taste aside, this cup certainly is perfect. George, Emily, we're going to Velvet Falls. There's something waiting for us there. I can feel it. York, are you joking? You're trusting your cup? No, Emily, going to a waterfall just might be a good idea. In feng shui, a waterfall is known to be a source of power. Even if we find nothing there, I'm sure it will give us some power. Thanks for the vote of confidence, George. And don't forget to bring a fishing rod. All right. I'll go get it. Fishing? Are you too serious? George, do you have a net? Zack, I hope we can catch a big one. Good fishing, Zack. We've caught something to brag about now. In all the history of the FBI, I'm probably the only one who fished out documents thrown into a waterfall. Don't you think so, Zack? I 
just don't believe it. Files from a waterfall. What does that all mean? It's called the legend of the new raincoat killer. George, have you ever seen this handwriting? <gasps> yes. It's Thomas's. George, I need to take these documents to Harry. He said he'd tell me everything once I take the docs to him. Those are classified. I can't allow a civilian to view them. Especially that deranged old goat who owns most of the town. I agree with George. Harry is... How can I put it? He might be dangerous. You don't need to worry. You said it yourselves, didn't you? There has never been a mass murder case in this town. That means these documents pertain to a case that never actually happened. Just look at it as though they never actually existed, either. Ridiculous. York, I'm sure you've got a plan or something in mind. Okay, you have my approval. George, are you sure? Emily, we need to continue looking for Thomas. Our search may just have become a hunt. Yes, get on it. I'll go see Harry alone. Okay. I wouldn't believe it if I hadn't seen it for myself. But Thomas? There's got to be a rational explanation for this. Zach George has started to change. I think the deaths of Becky and Diane had a deep effect on him. I guess this town truly is without a king now. Spending a bit of time investigating love. I'm getting a bit sick of being told that I'm either too slow or too fast. You agree with me, right, Zach?
sec, we can take a rest if you're tired. Zack, if you notice anything, just stop me. Mr. Francis York Morgan, finally you have arrived. You are welcome to come inside. Looks like the next game is hide and seek. Huh?
these girls, Zach. Do you see the resemblance? Anna, Becky, she looks like Diane, and Carol. Zach, look. Emily.
Emily! At times we must purge things from this world because they should not exist. Even if it means losing someone that you love. Stop! Zack, did you see that? I must be getting tired. Zack, looks like we're out of the countryside and back in civilization. Welcome, York. I brought the documents. Just what is going on in here? I warned you about haste. Take it slow. You'll lose sight of what's important if you just rush past it. As an agent of the FBI, I'm sure you know. So many people have got it all wrong. They think speed is the key. That being first is the best. They want speed satisfied with what the speed brings, even if it means that they miss so much on the way, they don't even see that. I see everything that they don't. From here, I see it all. Then, when the time comes, I make use of what I've seen. I can get whatever I want in this way, anything at all. You're certainly talkative today, Harry. But I didn't come here for a business lecture. Tell me everything you know. Speed is not important. Timing is what is important. Timing. York, you have a natural gift for waiting for the correct timing. Just be careful that your haste does not ruin everything. That will be vital to solving the current case at hand. York, I know more than you think, but less than what you hope. One, you have Nick in custody. Two, Thomas is missing. Three, Carol has a locket that belongs to the murderer. I also know that this case revolves around the Red Seeds, <laughs> but that's about it. So you've got an inside line on police information. That reminds me. The victims' tongues were cut out, weren't they? But 
But that's only a minor point. Don't let the shocks blind you to what's more important. That's another business tip. Harry, I'm impressed. You gather information really well. You hacked into the FBI network, too. Amazing. But I didn't come here to hear this. Then let us close the business seminar. It's time for a history lesson instead. I remember it as though it were yesterday, if you'll pardon the cliché. It was dark, rainy, a foggy night. My parents, who normally got along, were fighting over something. My father was blaming my mother, it seemed. Yes, so I left the house, headed for the clock tower. There was a party being held that day to celebrate the tower's completion. I wanted to see the town from above, and so I decided to climb the tower. Curious child, and saw it being constructed day after day. I'm not sure why, but I was really drawn to the tower in some way. And that's why I knew. From the pit in the theater, there's a path to the clock. They were just cleaning up after the party, so it was easy to get into the theater. I used the secret passage to sneak into the tower. But when I reached the top, I saw something very strange. There were soldiers there, all wearing gas masks.
morning, I awoke surrounded by dead bodies. It wasn't raining anymore, and the purple fog was gone. I couldn't believe what I saw and what I myself had done. But even worse things were waiting for me when I got home. My mother was dead. Killed, presumably, also by my father. The next day, the town was overrun by military personnel. And that's when the gag order was issued. Talking about the incident was unappreciated, a taboo. But even still, people stopped going outside when it rained. Country folk are very patriotic. We never tell our children about what happened. But these things find a way out of even the tightest of lips, in parts. People only speak of the killer in the red raincoat, which is where the legend of the raincoat killer comes from. Quite a story. After the incident, the gas seeped into the soil of the town. Even today, when it rains, a minute amount is released. That's why I never take my mask off when I'm outside. This town is dirty, York. If what you say is true, then the killer is someone who is badly affected when it rains. You need to draw the conclusions, not I. I have no conclusions. Is there a connection between the red seeds and the gas, then? This is just my own presumption. The seeds and the gas have a similar effect on our nervous systems. I believe someone figured that out and decided to use it. Or it could just be nature's way of getting back at us humans. York! <laughs> Good news! You'll hear from George soon. They have found Thomas. I'll tell you one last and very important thing. Just as you suspected, everything I have told you is gibberish. I never hacked into the FBI server. And I certainly know nothing about the Red Seeds. I shall thank you for listening to an old man, Babylon. Let me ask you one thing then, Harry. You're a businessman. You must be after something in return for giving me this information. York. At times we must purge things from this world because they should not exist. Even if it means losing someone that you love. That still does not justify murder. Remember this. Everything changes in form. There isn't a single thing that can maintain its shape for eternity. Overlook this fact. York, we found Thomas. Ah, he's at his house, right? How did you know that? Timing, Emily. Good timing. Ugh, whatever, just get in. George is heading over there already. Let's get a move on. Zach, things are finally starting to come together. All we need now is for Thomas to fill in the blanks in our new legend.
George what's happening. We received an anonymous call informing us that Thomas returned home. I sent Emily to get you right away. No idea who made the call? No. That's why I came on ahead, to see if the information was correct. A light did come on, but only for a second. I saw a tall male silhouette in the window. It was Thomas. Okay. I'm going in then. You two wait here. We'll be ready to burst in at any moment. Just call out. Zack, it's the same in the countryside after all. The climax of an investigation is always in an apartment. Too much noise. We're still missing a vital piece of the puzzle.
So, Thomas wants us to look around for him a bit more. So there's more to it. Kind of like the bonus footage on a DVD. I hope it's worth watching. Don't you agree, Zach? York? What was that noise? <gasps> Damn it! We need to seal off all routes out of town. No need for that, George. Huh? If he was going to leave town, he would have done so by now. Which means he's still got some unfinished business. Zach, do you think they heard what I said? We don't have to make a fuss. Thomas isn't going to leave town. That gives us plenty of time to find a way to view the bonus footage. So, where shall we go next? I almost became a goddess of the forest myself. Although I think the look might suit me. What do you think, Zack?
too much noise. We're still missing a vital piece of the puzzle. Zack, this is a waste of time. Let's go.
Huh?
That's one bizarre setup. Whoever made this must be crazy. First things first, we'd better let poor Nick go. Dad? Dad? Come on, boy, or it'll be too late. Come on, boy, or it'll be too late.
Hey! Oh, Emily. Uh, sorry, my dear, I must have fallen asleep. That's enough napping for today. Tell me the rest of the story. Yes, uh, of course. That was our promise, wasn't it? Before I continue on, though, I've got a little gift I want to give you. Wow. It's pretty. Consider it a protective charm, like a signpost. It will help to lead you through your life. A signpost? One day, my dear, you will find out one of the truths of this world. That the world is filled with contradiction and inequality. When that day comes, how you respond, what do you do? That will be the instant that determines the value of your life. This pendant will show you the way in that moment. The value of my life? Yes, dear. The value of your life. I have faith that you will grow up into a woman who can make the right choices. Do you understand, Emily? We come toward the climax. As the angels said, I was soon fated to meet him. What do you think of those dreams, Zack? So I do care for Emily. What about you? We should take this opportunity and talk about this a bit. If I hadn't seen your come into the bar, well, you wouldn't have found this place, would you? Now, how about that? I guess I've always been lucky when luck was needed. That's why I've been able to stay in business, too. Although we have Willie to thank for finding this room, I suppose. He's got a great nose. Clever, too. He'd be a great businessman if he wanted to be. I owed you guys one anyway. And I owed York big time, too. You guys didn't tell anyone about that whole thing with Diane. I want to help you guys out. Is there anything I can do? Kaysen, I appreciate the offer. 
but this is a police matter. You can leave everything to us from here. Oh, well, okay. George, look. These cigarettes, they're the same brand that York smokes. He's definitely been here. Carol's been missing since the bar closed last night. This town will be deserted if this keeps up. What do you think is really happening here in Greenvale? Emily, let's focus on looking for York. I just hope there are more leads than a cigarette butt around here. Track his scent, can't you, boy? What do you think, officers? Let him help you out, why don't you? Oh, he'd make a fine police dog. I told you, we don't need... Sounds good, Kaysen. We need all the help we can get. Come on, George, let's let them help us. But they are civilians. Do you have a better plan? As we speak, York might be... <sighs> Right. Let's have them help. Thank you, George. But one thing. With York missing in action, I'm back in charge. And York would give me hell if something bad happened to you guys. So promise me you'll call for backup at the first sign of danger. Yes, of course. I think we're missing something here. So I'm going to look around a bit longer. You go with Kaysen and follow York's trail. Thank you, George. We're counting on you, boy. Welcome to the force, Deputy Willie. <laughs> Let's get rolling, then. Okay. I'm counting on you, Willie. Oh, not counting on me, though, are you? Sheesh.
He can be a little selfish, but he's a good dog. He stayed with me all this time, through all the good and the bad. How long have you been together? Oh, we go back a long time. I can't even remember a time when he wasn't around. I had a dog when I was small, too. He was a beagle, so we named him Bee. <laughs> Stupid name, I know. He hated being left alone and always followed me around. I could tell him anything, even things I couldn't tell my parents. He'd look into my eyes and listen intently to anything I had to say. It's like he sympathized, and he didn't make fun of me. He would just listen. When I was done talking, he'd put a paw on my thigh. My worries just faded away when he did that. It made me feel like I was just a fool for worrying so much. <laughs> Dogs are great that way. Oh, yeah. Sometimes I think they got a lot more wisdom than us humans. Even if they are betrayed, well, they don't see it that way. Sure sounds foolish, but you know dogs, why they're always happy. I'm positive that even if man perishes off the face of the earth, dogs, why they'll just carry on regardless. They see everything, you know. From their dog houses, they look out and they see what humans do. Kaysen. Oh look, Deputy Willie's calling for us. He's always like that. Let's get back to the chase. Thomas, I know that you're there. Your disposition is not of my concern. But you do need to stop this. Untie me. Let me go. Right now. And you and Carol should take off. Go as far away as you can. Open a bar or a diner in a new town. With your cooking, I know you do well. Why, thank you, York. You're so kind. Unlike him. If I had someone like you, things may not have come to this. York, have you ever been in love with someone? Thomas, a long time ago, I witnessed two people that I really cared about die. Both pretty much at the same time. And since then, I've tried not to care about anyone so deeply. But recently, that way of thinking has changed. Emily, right? She's a nice girl. But I must warn you, York. You'd be better off not falling in love with her. Thomas, considering the circumstances, whatever I say might not be important to you, but I'll say it anyways. Don't you dare touch Emily. York, I think I've said too much. It's natural to respond when someone talks to you, I guess. Everything will end tonight. You just stay there until then. What's wrong? Something's bothering you. Oh no, it's just... I promised to have tea with, with Polly. I just remember. What's that got to do with anything? Yep, you're right. This just isn't the time, I know. But it's... Well, she reminds me of my mother who passed away. Kaysen. I've been a salesman for a long, long time. I never had time to talk with my mother, you know. Sales, they were the thing for me. No matter what happened, this was more important. So, even when she was sick, I put more energy into my work, which I regret now. And you know, when I heard she died, I was... I was on my way home, all happy. I closed a big deal in Jersey. Just when you want to give something back, you got no one to give it back to. Well, that, that's when I met her, Polly. I thought heaven had given me another chance. I really did. So I always stay in that hotel whenever I come up here. Oh, sure, the rooms are great, but but in all honesty, I go there because I want to talk with Polly. Does Polly know all this? No, no way. I'd never say anything so embarrassing to her. She'd think I've got some crazy mother complex or something. Right, let's get going. Deputy Willie disapproves of any chit-chat. 
I'll make it up to Polly some other time, I guess. Zack, I'm hungry, but it, I can't do much about that at the moment. Thomas is certainly a great cook. <laughs> it's a shame to keep his cooking hidden out here in the countryside. Don't you think so, Zack? Ugh. Which reminds me, there's another great cook in town. To fall in love with her would mean that I would need to love her cooking, too. Why does God test us so, I wonder? That coffee she made. <laughs> Man, did that pack a punch. I wish you could have tasted it, Zack. It's only a hunch now, but I don't think Nick killed Diane. What do you mean? Me and Diane, we were, you know, pretty close. I'm sure some people might have moral issues about it all, but I'd like to think that I knew her pretty well. Every time we, we finished talking, she'd bring up art. I'd make a face, you know, boring. And she'd always say, you're so different from Nick. He's so much more intelligent. Sounds like something she'd say. Nick was one of the few people who she could talk to, you know. And vice versa for Nick, I suppose. Diane also told me that she was best friends with Nick. He'd have nothing at all to gain by killing her. I can't believe that one would try to kill the other. I just can't. But even the best of friends can end up in the worst fights. Still, the voices and footsteps I heard that night, they were something else. Much more violent, more, more horrifying. Diane's voice sounded different, too. Different? Hard to explain. Of course, I couldn't make out what she was saying. You told York all this? Of course I did. What did he say? I, I know, that's fine. Something like that. <laughs> Let's go then and catch Diane's killer. Zach, about Emily. Don't you feel almost nostalgic looking at her? I don't think I've ever felt that way looking at a woman before. No, I'm wrong. It's a long time ago now, though. Do you remember that incident, Zach? Anyways, I was very surprised when she came to my hotel room. Not in a funny way, don't get me wrong. It was really exciting, though. I thought I heard my heart thumping inside, you know? It's inappropriate during an investigation. Right, Zach? Are you close to the Ingrams? No. I mean, well, I always say hi when I see them at their store. Don't you think they make a wonderful family? I guess so. Including Jim, I suppose they do. <laughs> Indeed they do. The ideal family, I'd say. You know that I look after Isaac and Isaiah pretty often, right? They talk a lot when I take them out. Yesterday, Mama and Papa, <laughs> and this morning, Grandpa. Always about their family. Just listening to him makes me feel so happy. I don't have any brothers, you know. Maybe I'm a little jealous of those two. That's why when I come here, I always pay them a visit. Greenvale is really like a second home to me. I can tell. Deputy Willie's calling again. Enough about me, let's get going. For some reason in the darkness, I see Emily's face. When I first met her on the bridge, she looked so dignified. And that glimmer in her eyes when she argues every word I say, her blonde hair lit by the dawn, heating steak at the diner, giving me directions in the car, the horror on her face in the gallery, and that coffee she made. It's like she's a goddess in a tight dress. Zach, let's pray that she doesn't become a real goddess. Willie, York is nearby? Good job, Willie. Can we stop running now, please?
Hey, so we took the long route here. You weren't playing with us, were you? George, we found out where York is. George? George! <sighs> Kason, I'm going in alone. Hey, hey! You didn't forget what George said. No, I haven't. And that's why you get to stay out here and keep trying to contact him. I'm just going to check things out. I'll stay out of danger. Trust me. Okay, if you say so. I'll take care of this here. York, Emily is here. Time to say goodbye then. Thomas, let me tell you one more time. It's not too late. I can help you. Just untie me and let me go. If you don't, the situation will be irreversible, unfixable. York, no situation is reversible. Didn't you know that? Everyone, everything proceeds along a path preordained by fate. Goodbye, then. I wonder who'll be the next person to open this door. Well, whoever that person is will be the one to decide your fate. Zack, what was I supposed to say? All I can do now is wait.
You sure took your time. <laughs> Thomas, you've got nowhere to run now. Just surrender yourself. Emily, I've been waiting for you. Where's York? Is he okay? <laughs> He's quite the handsome one, isn't he? I liked him the moment I saw him. He likes someone else, of course. Who do you think that is? Hmm? I'm asking you if he is okay. Answer me. Oh, yes. He is handsome. But me and Carol, we love not him, but a different person. My lovely G. Cut the crap. Do you know what you're doing? Why, yes, I do. All too well. Far better than you do, I think. You know nothing about yourself, nor this town. Please don't make me shoot you. <laughs> You're a silly, sad little woman. We're heading for devastation. All of us. And no one can stop it. <laughs> Oh, Thomas, you're sick, but there's still time. We can get you help. I'll help you. You're too kind, Emily. As kind as a goddess. That's why he likes you. This town is soiled, and only you are shining in it. That's right, Thomas. Let's just leave here together. It was so much better back then. We had so much fun. Emily, that was before you came. I won't let you have him. Again, surrender and turn yourself in. 
Emily. Emily, I do. <laughs> Thomas. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's enough, Thomas. Just come over here. <laughs> I don't believe. I don't believe. I just. <laughs> I hate you so much. Die, you skanky swine. Sit you, skanky what? Get away. Get away from me. Get off. <laughs> hey, Willie. Are you here with your owner? Hey! York! Are you okay? I'm fine. Got to spend some quality time with Zack. I heard gunshots. Did you get our man? York, Thomas is dead. I shot him. He tried to kill me. Thomas, I suppose that this is the fate you talked about. But Emily, what about the murderer? I just told you I had to shoot Thomas. Thomas's actions may have surprised you, I understand that. But our job is to catch the killer, isn't it? You didn't let the killer get away. York! Are you saying that Thomas was not responsible for the murders? What? That makes no sense. Emily, are you out of your mind? Thomas was certainly neck deep in this. But he didn't kill the girls. 
He has concrete alibis for all three murders. He also doesn't have the reverse peace symbol on his back. These are basic facts that for sure you haven't forgotten. Then who? I need you to be strong, Emily. If Thomas is not the killer, then there is only one other possibility. The only one with free access to the department files and doesn't have an alibi at the time of the killings. Love G himself. George? George is the killer? And since when did you start thinking this? I wasn't sure to start with, but you saw the pictures, right? In that secret room in Carol's bar, that was when I became 100% positive. But George didn't have the tattoo on his back. Ah, right. He doesn't have a tattoo on his back. But there is a pattern there. What do you mean? Emily, I'm not saying that the pattern was the tattoo. Remember what Harry said. There isn't a single thing that can maintain its shape for eternity. And George's back is a perfect example. Hey, you two. Could you explain this so I can understand what's going on? Emily, come in. Emily here. I've rescued Agent York from the clock tower. Thomas is dead. I was forced to shoot him. I see. And you two are both all right? Uh, York is a little weak, but we're heading back to the department now. Okay, I'll do the same. Emily, George is a friend of yours, isn't he? Yes. Then what we are about to do is going to be tough to deal with. Are you willing to go through with this? York, I'm Deputy Sheriff. This might be a small town, but I take pride in that. It's my duty to make sure that we catch all the bad guys in Greenvale. Even if it means facing an end that I would never have hoped for. Okay, then let's get moving. This case is going to end at the Sheriff's Department. This is madness! Willie, come on, let's go with him. Chickening out now would be like leaving after eating the appetizers. Emily, I'm going in from the front. You secure the back. Okay. What should I do? Kaysen, stay at the entrance. No, don't cut me out now. If this was a movie, I'd be some minor nameless character. And I thought I was the cheerful sidekick that helped solve the case.
Zack, I thought we might get a warm welcoming.
Carol, are you okay? George, George did this to you. Thomas, he's dead. I, I shot him. I, I had to. Jason, quick! Rush to the hospital. She needs a full stomach and liver cleansing. York, you need to come too. She needs... No, I have to take care of something here. But I can't take her alone. Please, Kason. Okay, okay, I'll do it fast. But if something happens, don't blame me, okay? Just go! I haven't been this emotional in a long, long time. Can you tell, Zach?
Agent Francis York Morgan. Ah, I finally got to see the real Greenvale. I knew you country folk were shy. It took you long enough to show me who you really are. York, this is a wonderful and powerful town. Especially when it is raining. I always get depressed when it rains. Especially in this town. This town has two great treasures. Do you know what they are, York? Those seeds are one of them. But I don't think they deserve to be called a treasure. An ordinary man you could never appreciate their true value. But you'll agree with my selection on the second treasure, anyway. I don't disagree with treasure number two. Emily sparkles like a precious gem. This town changed since she came here. The goddess from the city gave us the fruit of knowledge and gave us sin. When I first saw her, I realized I was such a fool. A fool for being satisfied by the petty girls from this countryside town. Ah, uh, George, I agree you were a fool. And you are a fool, even now. Shut it, York! You're the fool here. Becky, Diane, and Carol. They all died right in front of you. You couldn't save even one of them. Not even one. You're the worthless fool here. And that's what proves it. But me, unlike you, I am strong. I have power. My mother taught me. The strong, who can overpower others, is always correct and right. My mother stepped on my face with her stiletto heels because she had power. And when her heel pierced my cheek, I learned to respect her. Since then, I obtained power of my own and found my own disciples. I became divine. All I need now is that goddess of fate and grab her with my hands. I want Emily. In her stiletto heels. You're out of your mind. The goddess won't smile for you anymore, George. York, have you ever shot down a deer? Oh, it's so different from shooting a man. Deer hunting is great. They can be erotic creatures. Those Black eyes, firm hips, and slender legs. Hunting is a sign of power, especially in deer hunting. Did you know, York? From time to time, there's a family of deer that comes down to the graveyard. I shot them full of bullets, and they still remain standing. First, I thought they were zombies, but when I snuck up on one and cut its stomach out, I found the truth. The red seeds. Those seeds made those deer invincible. George, no Olympics for you. You'll fail the doping test. You'd be good food for wild animals, though. Shut your crap, York. I have these seeds because I chose them. They to me, and that proves my divinity. gave me proof of power, the red tree. The red tree? 
You've got that all wrong, George. That's the mark of child abuse. It's no use, York. Carol's death gave me eternal strength. It's surging through my body. I can no longer be killed. York, aren't you honored? You'll be the first to congratulate me for my new powers. Clever. I've got maybe more. Getting Anna and Becky involved was all too easy. Carol and Thomas built a secret club for me. All we had to do was tell them about it, and they were giddy to join us immediately. And that's where I used the seeds on Anna and Becky. Amazing results, let me tell you. They went berserk, like cats in heat. Anna, especially, enjoyed the seeds. So I made my decision. She would be the first sacrifice for my immortality. George, your poetic prose is a bit confusing. Let me reword this so it makes sense. You chose Anna as your first victim, so you could be a first-degree murderer. And you framed Thomas so it looked like he did it. <laughs> He knew that he was only being treated as a substitute for Emily. He knew that. Carol knew too. But they played along with your sick games. <laughs> oh my, you're making me cry. He's the one who told me about the Rainco Killer. About how to become divine too. He didn't believe any of it, but when he told me, it all made sense. Why was I born in such a run-down dump? Why did my mother beat me every day? Why didn't Emily want me? All these things were just preparing me for something more. Ultimate power! Ah!
imagination like that, you belong in the zoo. The Hollywood Zoo. Time to get serious, York! so concerned about this locket. I told you, I'm the chosen one. Only the chosen one can own that locket. That's what he... That's what he told me! Ha-ha! <laughs> I am special! I am! you're going to lose. You will also be able to return back soon. Uh. 
very soon you'll be able to go back to where you came from. <laughs> you also need to have more fun. I'll play with you a little if you like. Expect no praise. You did nothing but your duty. Francis, well done. I'm sure your father wants to congratulate you. I'm sorry, but I can't allow you to go with your parents yet. There is still something you need to do. Open that envelope. Agent York, finally you're awake. How long have I been out? A whole day, uh, plus ten hours or so. I wanted to challenge you to a game, but uh, uh, you were asleep. Emily, which room is Emily in? Emily? What, she hurt too? She hasn't come into the hospital. What? I told Kaysen to bring her here. Kaysen? Kaysen came. I mean, he's the one who brought you here. Which reminds me. He asked me to give you this. What is it? I don't know. He just asked me to hand it to you after you woke up. Anyway, you solved the case, right? Hey, do you want to play some chess? I'll have to take a rain check. I have an urgent issue I need to attend to, and I need to leave the hospital. Zack, I have a bad feeling about this.
Zack, I'm getting a really bad feeling about all of this. I truly believe George was the murderer that we were after, but killing him, of course, does not solve all the murders related to the Red Seeds. I do not know if what Harry said is true at all, but the answer to the mystery of those Red Seeds is here in this town. I'm sure of that. I failed as an FBI agent. I left Emily alone as I slept through an entire day. Zack, I need you to pray with me. Pray that things have not gone too far. All we can do is go to the location written in Kaysen's letter. George's house. This is most strange, Zack. I thought this story was all over. But it looks like there's something else before we get to see the ending. Zack, 
It looks like George really had a thing for Emily. Meeting the mother is always a bad experience after killing the son. Mark. It's a tree. Red tree. Red tree. Red tree. Red tree. He's the one. Emily. Over there! <laughs> Thank you. 
It's okay. being controlled by an unknown force. Let's try not to hurt them if we can. Open this door. There is no turning back. You still want to enter? Very well then. Off you go, Mr. York. <laughs> and finally you arrive. George is dead. You've got nowhere left to run. George! Oh, right, George. <laughs> he was a funny one. I gave him a toy locket, and he was so impressed, <laughs> so moved. <laughs> but he wasn't very intelligent. He was born in Town, you see. And, and it took him too long to discover the Red Seeds. Binding down people with rules is a sign of small mindedness, and that was what George represented in life. <laughs> I'm taking Emily. Oh, but I can't allow that now, can I? York, you left her to me, in my care, remember? I told you to come with us, didn't I? You must remember that. But you didn't come. You chose your job over the woman that you love. Casey, this chit-chat is over. Oh, <laughs> indeed it is. My fun with Emily ended just a moment ago. It was a fantastic moment. <laughs> like eating a full-course dinner. 
that ends with the ultimate dessert. <laughs> I fed her a fake story about my past, and she took in every word. <laughs> Cut out your nonsense. I told you, no more talk. There you go, York. That's right. <laughs> Feel the hate boiling from the bottom of your stomach. That's what makes little men create such great and amazing history. <laughs> Just like tiny ants that make giant ant hills. <laughs> you know, I just had dessert, and yet I'm already hungry again. <laughs> no wonder why I keep failing at keeping a diet. Jason, stop. The next one will pierce you between your eyes. York. Emily, it's me. I'm here. Don't worry. Everything will be fine now. York? Is that you? Oh, my God. York, I... Emily, no. That isn't me. York. York. Mm. Emily! <laughs> oh. <sighs> York. I'm, I'm sorry. I... It's okay, Emily. Hurry, come over here. We need to get you to the hospital. I, I can't. I, I can't go to you. I've... I've been soiled. No, that's not true. You have a heart that can't be soiled. No matter what happens to your body, you are still yourself. York. I... 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 saplings to sprout requires a, a certain technique. <laughs> what do you think? Artistic, isn't it? It's like a surrealistic painting. <laughs> York, shoot me. Let her go! <sighs> Remove that sapling from her body, Casey. Xander, it's too late. Once it's like this, I can't do anything to stop it. Please, darling. <laughs> Shoot me. I'd rather die. If you love me, let me die. Ha! <laughs> 
At times we must purge things from this world because they should not exist. Even if it means losing someone that you love. Yes, I, I couldn't do it. However, you can. When the time comes, and you have to make that decision, make the right one. Okay, Zack? Zack. 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 Morgan. Morgan. Francis. Zack. I saw you, Zack. Hey, Zack. It's okay. I'm here. I'm with you. I'll be with you always. We can get through this together. Who are you? My name is York. Me and you will always be together. Okay, Zach? I'm you, and you are me. Now, give me your hand. I remember. I traded places with York. York, the other me. My other personality. Zack, please. Please shoot. Kill. What should I do? Tell me what to do, York. Zack, you have to decide for yourself what you must do. I'll be with you no matter what you decide. Don't worry. There are some things in this world that must be extracted. No matter what. Even if that means losing someone that you love. I can't do it. I can't kill Emily. I'm sorry, Zack. Stop. Emily! Ladies and gentlemen, and now, the grand finale! <laughs> Emily, what have you done? Zack, I wasn't used as soil at all. You're beautiful. The most beautiful person I've ever seen.
Emily, no. You aren't supposed to go over there. That's not the way. Come back, Emily. York and Zack. Finally, I understand. You two really are best friends. <laughs> I'm a little jealous. got to meet you face to face but you had to go with York didn't you he always gets the girl he's a good guy you see that too right he kept talking to me and ended up pulling me back out of that room I'm sure he'll make you very happy
But I really don't like having to exercise. <laughs> You can run. <laughs> I'll squash you like a frog. I'm not done with you yet. Emily, I will avenge your death. Just a moment longer. I'll buy you a new dress to make up for all the pain I've caused you. The dress you wore when you came to my hotel room didn't seem to fit you right. <laughs> Jason, I've been meaning to tell you this. You're one crazy guy. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
down. It's because you don't understand humans. Emily, York tries not to show it, but he's pretty shy. Don't wait for him to propose. Just ask him to marry you. Are you leaving today? Maybe. Zach, that story I told you the other day, did you believe any of it? The fact of the matter is that I couldn't save Emily. So it really doesn't matter whether I believed you or not. I'm very sorry about her. There's something mysterious about that picture. There's a calming beauty to it, and yet it exudes sadness. Harry, I have a few questions for you. About what, Zack? Your last name isn't really Stuart, is it? Ah, uh, that is correct. It's really Woodman. Harry Woodman. George was my son. You were there in the White Room when I was there. Why? The same reason as your father. Long, long ago, I too was unable to shoot my wife. What's worse is that I was also unable to kill myself. Which is why I lost both. The woman I loved, and my son. My wife suffered from a mental illness, but I still loved her. I wanted to save George too, if I could. Everything was my fault. If only I had the courage to make the right decision, Emily and the other girls would not have died. But you have put an end to all of that. I wonder if they are happy. Zack, no need to worry about that. York will guide Emily and the other girls into the forest. Hey, Michael. Mind stopping the car for a moment? Very well, Mr. Francis Zack Morgan. I heard you're leaving.
Uh huh. That's right. It's a shame about Emily and the other girls, too. How are Isaac and Isaiah? Oh, they're fine. They still don't think the girls are dead. Give it to him yourself. He's right next to you. Oh, okay. I understand. We'll do it for you. Um, Emily kind of told us to give this to you. Emily said it's a present for Zach. Thank you. Where did you get this? Emily asked us to give it to you. See? She's over there. There's another Zach there, too. You're twins, just like us. Emily couldn't give it to you herself. She said she's too embarrassed. So, she asked us to hand it to you. Emily really likes you, Zach. She really likes you. No, she doesn't. Not me. She really likes that guy, York. The guy you see standing next to her. Anyways, you two, be nice to the girls, okay? And they'll be nice to you. We don't like girls. Girls are boring. <laughs> Gotta love them, just full of energy. Emily, York, sounds like you're both doing fine. I feel better about you two now. And hey, York, I figured out why George carried on his body all the way into the woods. It was for them. He wanted Isaac and Isaiah to find her. Mr. Francis Zach Morgan, if you are finished, if you are, please, let us return to the car. No need for that. You can go home. I want to take a look around more. Very well, then. I'm sure Mr. Stewart will approve of that. Ah, thank you, Michael. York, can you hear me? I'm a little jealous. I'm all alone on this side now. But don't worry, York. I've had it easy for so long having you with me. I need to get used to being on my own. One more thing, York. I hope things are going well with Emily. You've always been horrible with women. I gave you tons of advice during your last relationship. And you ignored all of it. I'm sure Emily will take the lead. Just don't fight her. Let her steer you in the right direction. York, tonight I'm going to sleep like a baby. Zach, it's over. 
all finished. It's time for you to leave town. Are you ready to go? Then this is goodbye, Zack. Thank you for everything. Good night, Zack. And sleep tight. Polly, what's that picture? Oh, that. We took it when the clock tower was built. Fifty years ago? That's right. That's me in the middle. I was pretty popular back then. Men were always around me. Sorry to keep you waiting. Just sign here, please. Mr. Morgan? Mr. Morgan! Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Polly. I was just thinking of a friend. Someone who was with me for a long, long time. He must have been a really good friend, then. Otherwise, why else would you remember him at a time like this? Indeed. We used to fight, but he really was a good person. He's gone now, though. Gone away to a place where we can't meet again. I'm sorry to hear that, but if he's a friend of yours, I'm sure he's getting on just fine. Thank you, Polly. You know what? I think so, too. Did Emily die? No. She became the goddess of the forest. Even now, she is still in the forest with York. She watches over the world from there. Emily became a goddess. That's right. Isn't that a lovely ending? Hey, Grandpa. Can I ask you something? What kind of person is York? York. He's a real nice guy. He's been a good friend of mine since I was small. Like Mr. Teddy? Yes, just like Mr. Teddy. A very important friend. your grandfather doing? I don't know. He's calling me Emily again. Oh dear, he must be losing his memory. You are Louise, honey. Michelle Louise Morgan. Not Emily. You know that, right? I know my own name, Mom. I know you do, baby. You're just so lovely, Louise. I'm sure that's why your grandfather mixes you up with a goddess. Mom, 
Where is the goddess? I don't know, dear. I'm not much like your grandfather. Is there even such a thing as a goddess? I believe so, but I've never met one. Mom, you're so pretty. You look like a goddess. Oh, thank you, honey. If I am a goddess, then you are an angel. <laughs> Mom, do you believe those stories that Grandpa tells? You believe them, Louise? They're all just made-up stories, dear. All fiction, like your picture books. So all my picture book stories aren't true? Oh, don't twist things around, Louise. You just want to know everything, don't you? Here, take this dinner to your grandfather. Go on while it's still hot. Mom, I understand what Grandpa's talking about. I've got Mr. Teddy, just like Grandpa's York. <laughs> Very nice, dear. Now off you go. Hold it straight or you'll spill the soup. I've got it. Zack, it's great to see you again. How many years has it been? I've been close to you the whole time. You probably couldn't see me, but you felt my presence nearby, right, Zack? I never thought you'd get married and have a family. Quite a surprise. I spent years honing my profiling skills, but I never saw that one coming. That's what makes humans so interesting. And that's why I just can't leave you guys alone. More than anything else. Seeing you look so happy is the best thing I could ever ask for. Anyway, Zack, 
Did you see the newspaper today? As it turns out, over the last three months, there's been a string of bizarre incidents near New Orleans. Residents there are reporting a sudden strike of nausea, and then they completely lose control of their bodies. Some have already had two months of only being able to walk backwards. Does that make you feel anything? It makes me feel something. I know you feel it too, Zack. Okay, Zack. I thought that's what you'd say. Well then. It's time to wake up, Zack. <laughs>